not be the truth. What is truth? It's what you want it to be.
We are back with uh, the week two of Blue Otter. Today we have Blaine on Esports uh, Ethereal playing Miss Cat's Gold. And tonight I'll be your caller with me is, uh, how do you pronounce your name? Gitano. Ms. Gitano? Gitano? Okay. Yes. Ms. Gitano on play by play. Um, two, I would say, uh, veteran teams. Flannel Esports is comprised of a lot of players that have played in BOL in the past, while Miss Cat's Gold has been like a staple. Um, Gitano, how are you doing today? And what do you think is going to happen between these two teams today? I'm doing great. I'm expected a whole bunch of just early, early scrimmages, fights, and someone just to get ahead early. You know, you want to see that boldness to come out. Um, Smolder getting picked right away, just super popular to carry for <clears throat> great reasons. You get those stacks, and you just become the game. What are you looking for? Yeah, Smolder B1. It's very strong champion. It's kind of like on the level of you know the level 16 cast and uh timer things like that it is gonna get hit pretty hard next patch but as of right now it's still a very strong champion it has like a 50 percent ban rate in uh ranked right now so and with the first pick of miss gets gold they're gonna go with the yasuo again you gotta get that uh 1 in 11 power spike for him in order to take over <laughs> the game so we got <laughs> one feeding and one Stacking up for that 250 spot. Uh, we'll see what the next couple of picks bands are here to round out the comp. I'm guessing there might be something to help that Yasuo for the pop-ups. You know, Nautilus, great choice for that. The point click can really isolate uh, someone out. Yeah, I'm pretty... You know, it's kind of odd to pick the Yasuo that early, in my opinion. They decided to pick it very early. They think it's going to be just like a blindable pick. But if Flannel um, have some kind of make, mega counter, like if they wait, they see the Yasuo either going top or mid. You know, you can always pick the Malphite. I love playing Malphite mid. They're going to end up going with the Talia, which is also a great counter um, because Yasuo cannot dash very easily with the Talia E on the ground. Yeah, just early Yasuo pick. I'm guessing they have a team fight ready to go. They have that dynamic that they want. They're going to pick it early just in case it does get banned out or they sniff out. Hey, it looks like they're going pop up, so let's give it a champ. Yeah, the hard counter mid here, so we'll see if there's a little bit more jungle pressure put on there. And then uh, World the Global Alt there from Shen, being able to help out the team. Safe. Yeah, a lot of teams just don't um, play against Shen very easily. It's kind of like Nocturne as well, as they don't respect the ultimate. They think it's like, oh, they're not in my lane right now. We could fight 2v2, and then they just end up getting outmanned with the Shen Stand United coming to the rescue. Um, but I don't think XL Physiology plays Yasuo, so I imagine that is going either mid or top. Especially with that Gwen pick here. Um, we probably expected to see top lane against that Shen. Shen, not a bad matchup because you 
carry inside every kind of gate that initial that Gwen does bring build up this AP as well just in there and yeah some bands here yeah I, I feel like that is actually gonna be a mid yasuo but the Gwen yeah with the Gwen pick um I'm gonna go top for clue so solo lane's already picked for Miss Cats solo lane's already picked for flannel and so Crazy enough, the last two picks we have on both sides is support aid carry, unless we see that Yasuo go in aid carry, which I don't believe is going to happen. Yep, oh, one more here. I'm going to adjust audio one. Yep. So, Milio banned from this guy's gold, and the counter flannel will ban the Callista. Callista? This actually would be a pretty strong um, pick against, you know, the Shen, the Smolder. Very easy to stay on top, but I want to see how these teams both round it out. Lux banned. They do not want to deal with the Lux support. Um, so I imagine they're going to go for some heavy kind of gameplay bot lane. I think they might actually go for like an MF bot lane on Risken's gold side. With All right, kind of let's see if that is better. Check, check. You sound perfectly fine to me. Perfect. All right. Yeah, usually you don't see the support AD carry pick last. Usually you want to keep that coveted last pick for that mid or that counter jungle top side. Uh, sometimes, so yeah, you want to take, oh, <laughs> that's a TF AD carry. Classic. At least yeah, right now, so, it's a classic. Yeah. Um, I do, so far, the Miscat's Gold comp is very high damage. They have a lot of ways to, like, get into fights as well with the Nautilus pick, with the TF Gold card, to make these picks. But, if they fall behind early, then they're going to be extremely squishy. Or Khan getting picked by a Flannel, um, giving another form of engage with that, with the Stand United can create a very massive engage potential threat from Flannel. Um, but right now, they're looking slightly lacking damage. To later early on, doesn't do that much damage. So a lot of these early dragons, these are the Void Grubs. Unless it is perfectly played by Talia and they're able to hit their abilities, then these fights might be swayed towards Miscat's gold early on. But they do pick up the Nocturne, which does give you that level 6 threat of the Paranoia. And like I said before with the Shen, a lot of teams don't know how to play against the Nocturne as well. <laughs> yeah, just that global. Now you have two globals to worry about. You know, yes, you can see Nocturne in another lane, but in, you know, three seconds time, he can definitely be there. Uh, Sin Zhao being shadowed here on the other side. If that's a lock-in, that's a very extress, uh, aggressive, very early game pick that we're looking at and yeah like you mentioned i see one side late game want to build up to there and the other side early aggression get ahead while we can otherwise it could be definitely a tier totter flipping to the other side yeah and this guy's gold definitely want to like snowball the game with the zen Zhao pick they should be able to get the early prio on the dragon they should be able to get the early prio on the void grubs as well um with the comp that they have the gwen at level six is very deadly uh and obviously if you have a yasuo um one easy knockup can sway a fight so i expect since out to pl play super quick uh on these neutral objectives um throughout the game uh nocturne on flannel i expect them to try to hit level six without even taking a fight against since out i would imagine they might play opposite of where Zin Zhao's playing. So let's say if Zin Zhao starts on blue side, Nocturne might start in the top side of the map so they do not clash because Zin Zhao is obviously probably with that fight. Yeah, just a little bit of safety. You want to get to that six, grab that Chen, grab the Nocturne, really hit your power strength of that core team. But I mean, there's great disengage too on that other side in case they do find a fight, but Zin just likes to stick on you like white on rice. Gwen as well. You know, I'm looking at that other... Uh, the side of your ver Mystic Cat's goal. It's it's just a lot of they're gonna get on you. If they cut if they catch you out, there's no way of you kind of getting away from them unless you got your yeah. team through your backup. And that's that's something that's kinda worrisome for the final squad because I imagine they might try to open up fights with, you know, the Recon quickness, the Nocturne Paranoia, the Shen Stand United on either Recon or Nocturne. But if they do that, they're gonna leave Smolder and Intelia um 
pretty by themselves against a Zen Zhao, against a Gwen, champions that can do a lot of damage, stick on you very well. Um, you got to be careful of how much you commit to these fights. Yeah, I've, I've played against Asia and Nocturne before, and it is dangerous if they can wombo combo that all together. Nocturne comes in, Shen comes in right on top, you have no idea what's going on. First you get feared, then you get taunted, and before you know it, you're out of the fight. Now they have to backpedal the entire fight, and that front line just becomes, you know, more towards the back, and Smolder's going to have that free range of going there, as long as for Khan, or someone can just stay back there. But the, here's the problem, right, is when you, you're going to use that much to dive, you have a lot of targets to fight. You yeah. have Yasuo, Gwen, Twisted Fate. They can also easily play front to back and kill the Nocturne Shen very quickly um, with the, how much damage they have, and then they work their way to the back line as well. So a little bit too much aggressiveness, um, especially if the Nocturne is behind, might spell a doom team fight for Flannel. Yeah, or even just using the Nocturnal Paranormal, just, you know, give it a little bit of a defensive use too. Like, hey, we might go in, let's just grab that second or two to back off and disengage the fight. So mm -hmm. it looks like we are getting into picks and bans and we'll be headed into the game. I I would love to see a level one invade just to see what happens. I'm not sure if it'll happen here because I think it'll be deadly between the TFs and like Mystic Goldcast just seems like they would just run you over if they found you. Yeah, especially if the TF um, gold card with the Nautilus could easily just flash to look for a flash for flash, um, especially if they're taking hex flash. The one issue is if Flannel does have some kind of response, and for they, they have a lot of damage themselves. So let's say someone overcommits, and now you have a laner that's behind. And Flannel is able to get some stacks on the smolder, get some damage or some kills in gold onto, let's say, Nocturatilia. Then this early game is going to start going Flannel's way. But Mr. Cat's gold or should easily win if they target one champion. But a lot of times you don't see that happen. A lot of times people get spread out and then everyone gets a lift. I expect Flannel to play more safe on this level one, probably playing very defensively, making sure they don't get invaded. But they also have the opportunity, let's say for a Nocturne on the blue side, you could go for some cheeky gank pad, like going into your Raptors to the enemy blue, if you know Zin Sao starting topside. And for this game, I feel like Zin Sao is going to be starting topside because they want to shut down that smolder. Yeah, just shutting down that smaller, like he said, it's like that level 16 cast, and the further you can backtrack him to gain that power spike, the better chances you have, because you're on a time delay for that, you know, it's just, it's a matter of when, not if he gets strong. Yeah. What, uh, what lane do you imagine Zen's gonna attack first? What's your predictions? So, there's a chance, there's a couple of ways they could go for this. They could either try to path top, try to kill the Shen early, get this Gwen ahead, and then Shen basically cannot play the game with a head Gwen. Um, or they could pad bot lane and they could get their TF Nautilus ahead to unlock the Nautilus to actually roam and affect the rest of the map. Especially if Nautilus is able to have free roam, start going mid, start um, helping with the Void Grubs, then the entire map control is on Miss Cat's Gold side. Uh, but it's mostly how they want to play the game, but Judging by how good the bot lane of Miskat's gold is, I feel like they should be targeting that bot side first. Yeah, just getting... If you get Nautilus and TF ahead, it just becomes a giant problem for the entire team on the other side. Um, but yeah, a, a one mistake, one fall behind here, and the other team just starts to get a little bit bigger of a push. Oh, I'm interested to like, see how this mid lane goes. It I, does look like it's a Yasuo Nautilus bot lane right now. Ooh. Unless they swap. TF going mid. Yeah, it could be. That would be interested. I mean, let's see if they do. I've seen I've seen more uh, interesting picks bottom. We'll put it that way. <laughs> I haven't seen Physiology play Yasuo in a long time, but I know they'd play a little bit um, over the course of seasons. Uh, so that looks like they're picked to... Uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's going to be Yasuo bot. So TF going to be mid, and I'm actually interested to see if they go AD or AP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... <sighs> so they wanted to bait out the Talia pick. 
early on. That's why they picked the Yasuo as possible flex, but maybe they just anticipated it going to ADC or to XL Physiology the entire time. Yeah. Uh, TF's still a great pusher if you go to that AP route, you know, pushing the lanes, grabbing two, you know, another global that can help those side lanes. Um, I feel like there's a reason why he's picked AD carry always and not mid lane, but it depends on your matchup too, if you can just kind of stay on the outside, you know, use your cards and whatnot, and try not to, uh, oh my god, I'm really blanking, who was the uh, famous one that could never, Reggie, the Reggie cards, <laughs> try uh, not card. to <laughs> totally botch the gold card and pulling up the blue one. Yeah, and I, th I think with that kind of swap, I think, yeah, I think it's, uh, very important for the Zin's out to make sure this bot lane does not fall behind. So. Yeah, just two melee bottom could spell a lot of trouble, especially in that smolder. Um, getting free stacks early, it just becomes a problem when you start to group around those objectives, you know, Dragon, Rift Herald, all those fun things. And then now, crap, now it's a really big snowball. Yeah, I kind of want to see. So I was talking about a gank pattern, and it works much better when you have a Yasuo, a, like a melee bot. Um, to gank you could go from the chickens to the enemy blue if you know where the zin south starting to through tribush into their backside of the bot lane and just um basically get a fear off and then probably get a kill um if you have any kind of follow-up yeah. um so i wonder if they could try to do that maybe get a blow a flash early or two or even get a kill um it does expose your top side to being uh invaded on but with the idea of that gank, uh, since that will probably be headed towards the bot side of the map, so he might not be able to invade. But other than that, it could be worked very well. And, you know, that gets your smolder head, it gets your recon, um, the ability to maybe do a quick run mid. Yeah, no pressure at all to get the bot lane ahead. Just, uh, you know, it's either going to make or break here. Uh, what are your takes on the new changes on the Rift? I know. A lot of my friends that are playing jungle don't like that now it's a little bit tougher to get those ganks off those bushes that are not right next to the lane you know you got to make sure you grab more wards which is better for the game um but yeah a lot of the junglers right now are just not having the best time with these changes what's your take on it um i think it's fine uh the problem that happens like with our old rift is that there's very key places to where to ward and wherever you're probably gonna get ganked from okay you can get ganked from the river so or the river bush you can get dove um but that's just a dive you can get lane ganked um but other than that it's just pretty straightforward um for now uh i think they are there are like very interesting paths you could take but it does give you the ability that people cannot predict where you're yanking from and you need to catch a lot of these laners off guard and a lot of this i think is just making sure you get cryo for your lanes even if you just go uh into the lane to help shove out a wave or you get a blow flash or you just show your face to enact some fear into these lanes it's pretty important yeah and looking at the summer spells i see no heals we got flash exhaust flash ghost flash exhaust i mean ignite so None of that coming out here. We'll see if they do a five point start here. Yep. And. Yep. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's some.
to Summoner's Rift. Thirty seconds until minions spawn. Again. Trying to just see what's going on out there. We'll see if he decides to go back. Looks like he's oh. going to stay within the lane safety here. Just a nice five point spread across everyone. Just nothing too crazy. I think they had time to just take that reset. They will be missing a good chunk of health early on. So they might be forced to blow their health potion pretty early, but so far, um, looks like pretty standard starts. We do see John starting on the chickens, and on the bot side, we do see uh, Prisma starting on the red buff. Yeah, we'll see if something cheeky starts to happen bot lane if they want to look for a bush gank. But it looks like Nautilus is just going to be grabbing the wave here and bringing it over. Shen down a little bit of health, but... Nothing too crazy. That Gwen poke, though, continuously will mark you down and just kind of run you a little ragged. Yeah, and in the mid lane, we do see Nate going for that AP build. Um, Vels is actually missing quite a bit of CS already. Um, actually, it was not that much. It was like two, but still two. three. <laughs> <laughs> it all adds up in the end, right? You're sitting there like, God, if I had 20 gold, I could buy this item instead of waiting 10 seconds. <laughs> the funny thing is, oh, we get a small... Nautilus coming in, grabbing fight. that hook right away. And an invade happening as well. Zin Zhao finding Nocturne, blowing that shield, trying to get a little bit off. The red buff burning for the Zin Zhao. Zin Zhao flash from Talia and getting that first blood kill. That is a very, very risky invade from John for one main reason. We saw Prisma starting the red buff. They're going to have the extra damage. And yes, they're going to be playing very aggressive with Zin Zhao, but if you're going to do that, you don't want to take chickens, go directly to the enemy bot side of the map. You're going to end up just losing that fight just because of the red buff burn damage. Velsus takes that kill, and they're going to be uh, in a pretty solid spot already early. And uh, look what's going to happen is Prisma was going to look to the top side of John's <laughs> map, but didn't realize the red buff was still there. Yeah, just a really questionable start, we'll put it at that. You know, if you have your TF there, which is pushed up, you got a gold card waiting to go, you could maybe hit down that Nocturne super quickly, but a good job by Talia also moving over and helping to finish that off. Yeah, and the funny thing is we go back to the CSing. The big thing um, when I was like first starting out and, you know, I realized like, wow, if I didn't miss 10 CS, then I have like basically kill gold. This is like 12 CS, but um, I'll, ha I'll have like an extra kill. And that just like made me try to CS better. <laughs> and then yeah, I started it, climbing. it really does make a difference. And, oh. you know. Oh, here comes the gank. Since out going bot side, looks like Smolder is going to be the target. Flash coming out, exhaust as well, trying to get a little bit of free Rakan, trying to oh. get a little bit of distance. Yes, well, Flash is taking a down. couple of tower shots. Exhaust does end up Smolder grabbing the kill there. Uh, just a great start here. They're like what you would want to have happen. Unfortunately, on the other side, the teeter totter is really tipping. Nocturne now coming to the top side. Gwen getting a little aggressive. Ghost popping out. From Gwen, they'll probably put that on the timer and possibly another gank as well in the near future. Yeah. It was looking pretty good, but I feel like a lot of it, a lot of the abilities were forced early. Super Hokey flashed immediately and went onto this uh, me and me. But look what happened. In the end, this is an aggressive dive. Physiology goes down in the bot lane while Mina and Set Appreciator still have one sum left while the bot lane of Miss Cats blew everything. Yeah, no sums bot lane. Uh, the melee happened again. One thing you don't want to have happen is kind of falling behind early. Yes, you're up 3 CS. There's still a lot of lane phase to go, but your early advantage kind of shifts away at this point. So a couple of buys here. It looks like nothing too out of the ordinary. Topside Gwen just grabbing a little bit and going to be headed back from the pressure. Still has that TP available as well. Top side, yeah, yeah, honestly, Gwen. Uh, I don't, I don't think Luke 
did, had to TP right there. Um, the wave was slow pushing, and it didn't look like Rex was hard pushing into the wave. So they could easily just walk back, collected all the CS, and still had the TP um, in hand. But right now, we do have a TP advantage for Rex. So if Rex takes a quick trade, or if Rex makes a quick play and let's say into these void grubs they can tp back very easily but it looks like john is going to be sitting on the void grubs going to start taking it with the help of super hoagie um just to make sure yeah just a nice support roam there get yasuo a little bit of solo xp hopefully try to catch up here and looks like dragon will be the next target as they know they are taking um the objective on the other side here and they will yeah. be back in there shouldn't be a contest should be a nice even trade here uh earth dragon going over nice defensive stats headed over shen will be happy about that a little more resist in his pocket and oh rex needs to be a little bit careful here as kluke is level six oh and yep. tf from the back there as well and didn't quite need it but there just in case something does happen uh, that poke from yeah. gwen is deadly it's a little bit of greenness staying there with not that much health, especially because you know that you can't really walk to the wave anymore because you're either just going to sit there and watch your minions die or the enemy minions die to your own minions, or you're going to try to walk up and you're just going to die. And for Nate decides, I'm going to go in, help get this kill. But unfortunately, Nate did not get a gold either. So. <laughs> yeah, so unfortunate, but, you know, rather be safe than sorry at some points. And also your team's ahead. Or not ahead, but you know, just grabbing a little bit of an early lead. Go back, grab the wave, come back. Yes, you might be down a couple of CS, but at least you're not down CS and the kill. We see John headed down to the bot side looking for a play um, again. And this time, they hope that it's going to go a little bit more smooth, <laughs> smoother than what happened last time. <laughs> Exhaust just puffing up for Yasuo here. Can definitely dash, dash, revolution through the wave to his target there. Uh, looks like Zen will be backing up just a little bit. Maybe. Some, you know, a little bit of curiosity coming down, but I don't, doesn't look like he's going to mid lane. Nice job from Talia poking out TF here. What do you think of the mid matchup? What are your, it's gonna be what a are snooze your fest. thoughts on them? <laughs> it, it's just, it, by the way it looks, it's going to be uh, Nate just trying to clear waves and Vels is just trying to clear waves and looking for poke as well. Um, at some point, I want to see uh, a little bit more aggressiveness from the uh junglers to the mid lane especially because both of these mid laners have ultimates that can affect the other lanes pretty easily so i want to get i want to see one of them get ahead so they could easily use that without um with they could use their ultimate abilities and be very effective on these roams right now they yeah. don't have that much gold in their pockets kind of the wet noodle fight that you'd see in top lane but just a little more damage maybe a tic tac on the other side or Something like that, just for a little extra damage. Nocturne 6, Talia 6, they might be looking for a counter gank bot lane here. There, you have... You gotta be careful, Zen oh, in the wow. bush as well. I didn't... That that was a good back, but Physiology needs to be careful, as well as uh, Super Hokey, because look who's just in the vicinity <laughs> waiting for a play. Just waiting in the wings, just hoping they go in, but maybe too much of a, um aggression posture down there just giving away like hey we are here yeah i mean when you see um the reason why john backed is because you didn't see the talia for a while and also you need to make sure you know that there's a possibility that uh nocturne can be in the area as well so taking it back there just making sure they don't um accidentally just walk themselves into a trap very good play but in the top side we see the cs difference getting very very large as lug is about 23 CS ahead of Rex. Yeah, roughly that two kill mark, as you said earlier, you know, that 12 CS per per equality there. But right now he just has to kind of stay back, CS a little bit more, and just hope that the rest of the team can kind of counteract that balance here. Um, we'll see if bot lane makes any more aggression here. It's been a pretty quiet bot lane uh, coming in. A little bit of a CS difference, too. We got 81-68. Is that... Oh, gonna be a trend or do you think that's gonna level out it shouldn't be a trend especially because mina did get the early kill um i think it's just you know missing just a little bit just here and there but especially because we did see super hokey roam um pretty early on that this yes should not be like a big thing 
And it looks like it jungle. Is. We have a little bit of Husker do going back and forth here. They did see them in the pit going for their objectives. Yeah, so team is Bridgewater coming has over. been is level seven now, and we yet to see the paranoia used. So a lot of uh, hesitation using any of these ultimates or just looking for a play. Um, but as a Nocturne, you got to look for like even trying to get a flash out or just because if you just hold on to that ultimate, you're just going to end up wasting it and you're going to allow this game just to scale to the point where Nocturne's ability to make these plays are just not going to be a good thing anymore. Yeah, it's just like holding on to a TP, you know, you hold on for 15 minutes, ready to use it at the right moment, the right moment never comes. It's, you know, useless at that point. Um, so, and maybe they're thinking in their head, hey, we got a good early game start, we just gotta hold off for a little bit here. Let's, you know, take a fight 15, 20 minutes in and see where it goes from there. Yeah, so, second Void Girls were taken by... Uh, Miss Cat's in, look what's happening bot oh. side. TFL coming in here, trying to get a catch out. Does find that as well. Nice dash in the Nautilus ult drudge line. And United States, United States. Oh, gets out of there. Smolder calling down mom for a little bit of help there, but... Yeah, no stand United. They had total faith in their bot lane, and that was a lot of resources being used there. Um, I'm shocked and surprised in a great manner that that bot lane was able to survive. Nocturne all here trying to get that dive mid, finally using a Gwen there as well. Unfortunately, I think the Nocturne else has get seen out. the rest else is of his stayed a little bit too. Oh, trying to get out of there, puts down the blocks. Nautilus all barely clipping. That's her fort of hers, and does get a good trade back there. Uh, Air Drake coming out here for the next bot lane. Needs to either get on the move or they could be the next targets here. They made one great escape. Oh, nope, looks so, like they will let them come out. The problem with that play, right, is you make that play, you know the Nocturne is probably going to go one for one day, especially because Klug is right there just going to pick up the kill. If you're Velsus, you cannot be in the area. You can need to just get out and you, because you know the Nocturne is dead. Prisma is going to die no matter what. But the longer you stay, the easier it is you're going to get caught out, and that's exactly what happens. So that one for one becomes a one for two in favor of Miscats. Yeah, a good play turning into a 50-50 a play there at best. Gwen yep. trying to get and, out uh, of the Shen getting in. With the team match. needs to be a little bit careful. You don't really win against the Gwen at this point. <laughs> I mean, still holding in their trades. Yes, you're not winning, but uh, just trying to show a little bit of aggression. Maybe a little bit of a just back off a little bit. I might be down, but I can still hang with you. Health bar might say a little different, but, you know, yeah. it's all mental. So, so far, I feel like the overall... Um, game the macro decisions of Miss Cats is heavily outweighing um uh flannels uh it doesn't feel like flannels really playing as like a 5v5 team right now yeah a lot of solo plays which is great but when it comes to that team team fights and t games you gotta be able to be cohesive nocturne there nice bubble shield grabbing that gold card out great knockback by talia and nice kill Bali now getting the aggression. Looks like they will be going on the smolder. Smolder trying to get out of their mom's call down. Ignite down as well, but cannot finish. These bot lane fights are so close. Yeah, but look who's they... on the roam right now. Oh, Nocturne coming topside as well. Nice alt paranoia coming down. Shen also trying to botch that up. A little bit of CC coming out, but those blades just whirling out, grabbing the damage. Bot lane as well, getting a little bit of aggression. Nocturne. <laughs> Ugh, is running away and <laughs> Xin Zhao coming in just at the end. They did get a so, kill for the Nautilus. The time for trying to gank the Gwen is pretty much over. Especially because, you know, Prisma is not that strong. Your Shen is very behind. You're playing against a uh, Gwen that already has the Rift Maker complete. Making that play top is not going to do you justice anymore. You get a kill on the Shen, whatever. What's going to happen, right? Yes, you want the shutdown, but you're also risking... You're probably going to go one for one. If not, you're just going to lose both or just lose a fight in general. Yeah, about two seconds of CC worth and still not able to get out of there. TF all the coming down gold card does find the Rakan. Nice job by Zen Zhao being patient in that tri bush. Yeah. You know, you make a good play on one side and it seems like on the other end, there's just a little bit of a confusion or, you know, a misfire play on the other side. Windwall coming out. Be able to pick up this kill. 
Oh, he's looking for him. He's got exhaust coming down. Oh. Unfortunately, just Flash running out with less than probably, that's a 20 HP there. TF looking oh, for the next side and we jump to right the other side. 3v1, unfortunately, not going to happen. And yeah, there will go is, Rift Herald. Prisma's getting caught out in, in some interesting places. Um, especially because you know that this Herald is very important to the Miscan's goals because they did pick up six Void Grubs. This Herald is going to demolish these turrets. Um, and your team is making a play bot side. There's no way you should be in that area. Yep. You know Miss Cat's going to go for it. If you're going to try to make a play on that Herald, you need, you need to make sure the team is going to be willing to do uh, join you as well. Yeah. And topside CS stiff now going to that 40 mark. And I'm guessing it's going to be ever increasing. It's going to be the problem where you might have to send three, even four to stop this Gwen, which is going to be a very big problem. Going to have to attract a lot on that side. If they grab Baron, ugh, I would love to see the old uh, 5v1 from the Gwen at that point in time. So on the bright side of Flannel, you do have a 4 one Talia. And you do have a smolder that is getting really strong. Currently, they're sitting at 104 stacks. So they're on their way. Actually, they're pretty behind. I feel like I feel like they should right here. They should be around 150. So yeah, just I don't think they're gonna hit 225 until like 30 minutes into this game. I mean, halfway through at that point right now, game. You know, you still have the outer turrets minus that top side here. Um, we'll see how much. The pace does get picked up here. They're going to be looking for an engagement. They do have three mid here. Nocturne kind of waiting in the wings, but that Void as well. Ready to just plop that down and end that mid turret. Yep. And even though uh, John is level 9, which is, they're pretty underleveled, um, they still have the fully completed Titanic. We saw how much damage they could do on a target if they're um, solo them out. So you still gotta be careful of how much damage they can put out. Yeah, that pick potential, like we saw that Nocturne just got demolished here. Void crashing into mid. We'll see if he takes him one oh. shot. Oh Not my god. Void. <laughs> And it looks like the pick is happy and again for that Nocturne. He's just not having a great time. It's Lee on the backside trying to get out of there. Mom getting called down by a smolder TFL. Just showing everyone Prisma the vision here. down here. Yep, Nocturne. Unfortunately, getting down there. Rakan will be the next person. Everyone else just needs to get out and get out of there. Talia kind of stepping up. Unfortunately, gets gold carded. CC there by the knowledge as well. Judge Light down. getting brought out. And Yas will hitting the alt at the final here, and they're still not done. Gwen just hanging around the area, just four levels up, and I just, I, I think you just need to leave it at this point. You know yeah. they have the dragon, just step away. Yeah, the minute that fight started, if they're going to make any kind of play, you need to Rex the TP in. They had TP, um, they didn't have to stand you dead at that point, but you need to have them there. When you're taking an odd man fight, when the gold is this even, you need all hands on deck, and right there, Rex decided to push the top lane. It wasn't even be able to get the tower because they're Shen. So they lose the dragon, they lose the fight. A huge shutdown goes on to the TF. And uh it's looking pretty dire right now as it feels like Miss Cast is just outplaying um flannel macro wise. Yeah, maybe a little bit of an early hiccup for him, but they are making it up here in this mid game. That Shen barely getting that tower to 50% at best here. Uh Smolder still gaining up those stats, but uh, a little bit of better decision making, a little bit of team play calling here, maybe maybe some misinterpretation of what's going on on one side. Yeah. It's uh, only a 1.8k goal lead right now, not the worst. Um, you still have your win conditions of the smolder, you have a lot of damage, but Velsis might get caught out right here. Yeah, it, yeah, she's just so far ahead. The Stand United also coming down, oh. trying to save out. Does get a nice taunt there. And a great shutdown for Shen. Ugh, that Stand United saving. Yep. <laughs> saving them. That was huge, especially because that gold onto Rex is going to get them much needed uh, items to try to sustain in the side waves. Um, Velsa's is already pretty strong, so not that big of a deal that they didn't get it. But getting the Shen back in the game, allowing them to uh, survive in side lanes is huge. But they are pushed up pretty heavily right now, but they're going to be totally fine. Yeah, or Titanic Hydra there. <laughs> Looks like TFL coming in gold card. 
And also the Nautilus providing that great gonna... CC. Just oh, oh, down. oh, oh misses it on the corner! <laughs> Shen using that blast plant and getting over to safety. He uh, he needs to luck think that pixel <laughs> that was right there on the end. First moment finds out literally Nate, um, but I think it's gonna go on there. Just a little bit of damage traded, um, but we have some kind of ARM situation going on as Rex said, appreciator and Mina is in the mid lane, just trying to poke down this tower. Uh, go back to this uh, smelter counter. It's at 157, so you know about 70 off of getting their execution, their baby elder. <laughs> Yeah, it's when you get to that point, it's great, but getting to that point can be a little bit of a hassle here. And who doesn't love a good ARAM, you know? Just shove her down mid. Yeah. Looks like Klug is going to be on this you know, outskirts, just trying to make sure that if there's a fight that breaks out, that they're just going to be ready. But at the same time, Rex has been pushing topside, and they should be able to get this tower, so... Yeah, I can turn that down, Titanic Klug is going to go for a fight. Oh, uh, here comes the ghost play. Shen trying to just get out of there. Doesn't want to fight at all, but unfortunately just going to be clipping him here and there with that ghost being able to catch up. Nocturne looking towards spot side. TF trying to get out of there, and Talia also joins as well. That is one dead twist of fate. Nautilus looking in for the ult. Finds it, but unfortunately it's already too little too late. And it looks like Shen also escaped here. Had about a quarter HP left. Yep, they did. They were able to get out of the, uh, the dangers of Gwen, and on the flip side, they did catch up the TF in the bot side, so even the... Sh oh, well, oh. spoke too soon. <laughs> Prisma! <laughs> Decided to go into the Flag of War. Somewhere. They are right there waiting for him. It's gotta be frustrating. Flash being blown at the end of Zen. Uh, not sure if it was needed, but you might as well, you know, kill Sakir at that point. Gwen pressuring towards that bot side more. We'll see what happens. Shen now completing a couple more items. Got a little bit more resist. And that Titanic Hydra still, she's hitting like a freight train. Yeah. You can't really keep trading into the Gwen. Because you know what the Conqueror eventually and the true damage that Gwen has on her snip snip. You're just going to take half your health in one very quick ability. So you're not going to ever look to win that fight. You just got to make sure this Gwen can't keep pushing to your towers. Because right now, there's no one on the team of uh, Flannel that could actually 1v1 match her, but on the bright side you do have the Stand United, you do have the Paranoia to try to make this an odd man match to try to kill the Gwen before she could do any more damage. Yeah. A little bit of vision clear here. They do spot out the, the Zenzao on the back side of the map comes over and they will oh. be looking for the next team fight here. TFL uh -oh. coming down. Oh, Elsa will be caught out here. Oh, Stan United coming down, trying to save them. Nocturne ult going towards the backside. Mom coming down at that tribush does find a kill as well as a Nocturne. Senzawa and Yas will have to escape, and that should be a free, free dragon for them unless they do find a play. Gwen still just trying to trade back and forth, but has to be careful. Looks like the rest of the team is busy here. Yas will stepping up. Windwall coming out as well, trying to give him a little bit of a delay. Zen and Yas will having to come back here. Gwen leaving them alone, and that'll be another dragon stepped over. Yeah. So, Mitchcast thought they had a pick onto Velsus, but they did forget that San United was thing, and the Archangels did pop as well. So, that massive shield was two things the Seraph's Embrace, um, Lifeline passive, and then the Stand United shield. So, I'm pretty sure that entire shield was uh, like a thousand health. Yes, <laughs> if not more. That was a. Uh... I was like, either Shen's going straight AP or uh, got a shield out of nowhere here. Yep, so they got they thought they got the pick, but then they got picked themselves, so the dragon <laughs> does go over the flannel. This game is now 2-2 two two in dragons. Gold is pretty much even, and that's another kill that went to Mianmi. There are 18 stacks off of uh, their execute, so they are very close, especially with these fights kind of contributing to it. Oh, Flash coming up by Nautilus, trying to find that engage once again. I love the aggression of it, but it just, every time, it's the Houdini, the escape artist on the other side, just getting out of there. Yasuo yeah, getting tied up a little bit with that wind wall, saving a whole bunch of damage and pressure being spilled over. In the bot side, we do see Klug actually attacking that tier 2 tower in the bot side. They're actually going to take it. With how much damage you have with the Nash's Tooth and just the AP ratios on hitting towers, 
It's uh, you can't lead the squad by themselves. Yeah, it's gonna be a two, three person job at least to take out that that Gwen. But oh, we see on the other side now, Baron being pressured. Oh, we got and a TP. They're gonna look for this Baron. Yeah, TPing up. Good job. You got double double bot here as well. Talia and Shen both responding down there. They see that with a vision. TP coming in here for the Talia. Shen still able to join a little bit on the alt here. Not quite able to send that, but it looks like oh. they will be starting the fight. Great four-man alt there. Mom coming down, <laughs> smashing through everyone. Nocturne as well, just giving a little bit of Paranora. Paranora <laughs> got that. TF getting knocked back and Smolder unfortunately going down, but a five for one, you can't, you know, could ask a five for zero, but still not you know, bad at all. Rex was, um, you know, pretty much out of the game for a, a lot of this, this entire game, but that play right there just made up for the <sighs> entire thing, especially what they've been doing in the second half of this entire series, helping making sure that that Gwen died in the bot side with that Stan United, and now right there with a the massive taunt, they're able to secure that fight for their entire squad and that Baron. So now the driver's seat is going to be the Flannel Esports. So, wow. If I have to announce for a play of the game, I think my my vote might be for that. Just that crazy flash taunt grabbing four and the wombo combo that hit so hard. That was just a freight truck coming through their team. Yeah, that was a good, good vision from Rex right there, just making that play. Um, and... Now we saw at the back half of that fight, we saw Mina hit that execution damage. They have 228 stacks. They did go down to physiology, but at this point, you have to say, what can Miss Katsu do? Yeah, it's unfortunately, they hit their power spike. You're going to be feeling it, um, especially with that Baron. Yes, now Shen's going to have a better time with that Gwen as well if they do end up matching up. But the poke that's coming out, you can see Yasuo already at half health couple more shots you know he's gonna have to tp back they could definitely look for a dive it just opens up that game so much now we're almost at that 30 minute point oh it looks like not they do not China. want the gwen to <laughs> get the I 1v1 box. talia also coming down that was a that was a great dive to take them out there 45 seconds on that gwen that's plenty of time with baron to get that yeah and uh unfortunately we have that pause bug that's been a thing for like you know two seasons now but <laughs> small indie lead, company they'll fix that eventually off that fight at baron the goal lead was pretty much even now we're looking at a 5.2k gold lead this is absolutely nuts how crazy this game has spiraled third dragon is coming up for, for either team so it's a fifth dragon total and uh i assume this is going to go to uh to flannel but i don't expect this actually to see a soul in this game yeah it I and mean, if it gets there we'll definitely take it but i don't think so as well um we'll see if shen goes back towards that top sign match that tf for the global alts and we will see some vision coming out gwen does come back here i think next fight you know if they find a nice five for one again that should be should be game with that push power that they have Looks like uh, ah. Prisma just really wants his tower, and they'll be able to get it, and Gwen will also just oh get melted God. down with how much damage is coming out from both Velsus and Prisma. Yeah, just within three seconds, that Dark Seal just keep on getting stacking and stacking, and the damage that comes out on top of that death cap. Oh, I was a little nervous for Nocturne there, but definitely showed that he can hang with the big boys there for a little well, while. At, at this point, we actually see Prisma having three and a half items. So, they are extremely strong, especially with the Stride Breaker Black Cleaver. They have enough health to sustain the initial Gwen burst. And they picked up a lot of kills in the last couple fights. So, now they are a massive threat to any sideline pressure. So, Clue cannot uh, just safely sideline anymore to try to knock down these towers. They're going to be in heavy danger, especially because you know Vels is, is going to be gunning for them. You know the Prisma is going to be gunning for them as well. That's the only threat they're actually worried about. Yeah. Two and a half minutes here, roughly, for that Baron timer. We'll see what they want to do. If they want to start strangling towards one side of the jungle, start clearing some vision, start grabbing that chokehold, or pressuring any of those inhibitor towers, or if they just want to hold back and just wait for the opportunity to come to them. P Prisma is now level 16, so you're going to have that level 3 uh, paranoia. So that is going to be on a very short cooldown. Let's see, it's on a 60 second cooldown. So every minute, 
you can see that ult being popped. Yeah, and the range on it too, just extending that much further. I mean, it can definitely come out of nowhere, no matter how deep you ward. And it looks like mid lane will be the pressure Gwen kind of hanging out on the wing. Just gonna see if she can find someone. Oh, and top side here, TF getting poked out massively. Has to return back to base. We'll see if they take that pressure back to a tower. Yeah, they are splitting. They're going for one with the Talia actually pushing top side. Um, John will try to stop the Talia push, but you know, it's going to be pretty difficult. <laughs> There's oh. only so much you can do. It does pull the Shen. Uh, nothing that they're going to head back in on here. Minute 25 left for that bear, and I think they're just going to stall time, grab that objective, or try to fight around that at least, see if they can grab another great taunt here. Nautilus trying to clear a little bit of vision. Unfortunately, no one there to help him out. Zin Zhao still towards that backside, looking on the target. Getting locked down. Oh, Mita's getting caught. Older, trying to run out of there, gets exhausted, does finally fall. TF on the back end as well, trying to poke out Windwall coming in. Trying to gate a whole bunch of damage. Shen trying to run out of there. Unfortunately, can't find one. Talia a little too late on that backside to join in here. You still have Nocturne and Rakan, but your big two right now, unfortunately, are out. Nocturne and Paranoia coming out, grabbing that target. Zenzao goes down looking for Yasuo. Flash blown there. TF going down as well towards the backside. Oh, great use of that right there. Yeah, that last so that fight, fight getting over. Ugh. broke out at a very wrong time as Prisma and Velsus both backed. Velsus did TP in, but Prisma had to walk it and try to get in the range of Paranoia. They did bring back the fight a little bit at the end of just the over-aggressiveness from um, Miss Cats, but Velsus might be... Eh, they'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, 2-0 yeah, right away, and then coming back, a nice swing there, Nocturne. Going in aggressive, finding the kill, flashing over at that blast plant. Uh, that was that was a thing of beauty. Yeah, we did see Mina actually blow um, both their summoners. They got exhausted. They still got caught out. I think they failed to flash off all, so they couldn't get out. Um, and then they got gold carded, and they got hit with the physiology tornado into uh, the last breath. So they were uh, pretty much out of the fight almost immediately. And without the damage from the smolder, that fight went heavily one-sided to miss cats yeah just a little bit of a hiccup there just going towards those uh those that camp and just getting caught in that corner unfortunately not able to get out baron being up now there is some vision on the back there so they won't be blind towards it here clearing out the vision trying to move forward a little bit tf on that side lane trying to relieve a little bit of pressure there and they will all be walking towards baron's side and uh, right now, Minami has 284 stacks on the Dragon Practice. So, still stacking. Still getting stronger. <laughs> it's that only going to get worse and worse. <laughs> and it looks like we have here, though. here for the Dragon. Just a bushwhack, just hoping to find its mark. One lonely bait comes out of there. It's like team is going to separate just a little bit. TF still pushing on the other side as well. Gwen oh, Clue might have of... messed up right here, and I think they did. Oh, burnt off a little more than they can chew, blowing the ult there, but grabbing that kill, making it 4v5. Shen still topside, looking somewhere to join oh. this fight. Paranoia comes in, not finding a target, but still starts off the fight well. Yasuo, a little bit off to the side, away from his team. They step past the wind wall, trying to get to him. Looks like they will Oh, barely shut him down. TF on the other side trying to get a little bit of help. Shen flashes over trying to find Talia. Unfortunately, not able to knock back the target. And that is a four for zero. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, you know, a little bit too aggressive uh, plays from Kluke just trying to uh, stop Prisma from taking their camp ends up to their downfall as they got caught out. And then eventually the fight broke out where everyone was just getting picked apart. And so it's three are down they actually decided to go back and just take the dragon they probably could have ended right here but they decided to take the safer route yeah sometimes rather be safe than sorry still not done with the fight though tf being the next target and he will go down that could open up a free baron and a push for the end here yep 
and now we have a rampage smolder of course you know at this point you know it's gonna be like oh there's a possibility of a pentakill there's a very big possibility with the small yes. <laughs> 35 minutes oh. and the magi soul stealer for that mid lane as well Twia just hitting hitting hard i mean oh, oh. what how, yeah, how they, do they come back from this i i don't think it's possible um the opening that you have is having a possibility of y Yasuo being strong enough to uh, one uh, your Yasuo and Gwen to one v nine, but you really don't have that. Yasuo is farmed pretty well. Um, Physiology does have three hundred nine CS, but he's only on only three items. Um, when you're playing against a four item Smolder, and on top of that, you can't really play very easily against the Talia or Nocturne, which you just saw um, when Noc uh, Yasuo just gets jumped on. And then, of course, you have a TF in mid lane. TF's build, Nate's build, it doesn't have that much damage. It's a lot of utility, um, but you can't really burst anyone out. Oh, Panero coming down. Gwen, unfortunately, at the target <laughs> on this side as well. Once again, it's deja vu. We see those two come down uh, yeah. and ripping the target. Nautilus Drudge Line coming out, possibly here. Oh. TF all being used. Wants to grab a little bit of vision, see where they're all at. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, that ultimate is now on a 51 second cooldown. So, pretty, uh, it's gonna be up again in about like 20 seconds. Yeah, nothing. Once you get to this point of the stage, you just have to imagine that all are, all alts are up at every fight. Yep. Baron, Baron being the next started, target here. Uh, I don't see any way this cat's gonna contest this. If Jaws tried to steal this. Oh, that's close. Close, but no cigar. There's not horseshoes or hand Whoa. grenades. Flash over by Nocturne trying to Paranoia find someone. Paranoia is available now. We'll see if they do that. Talia trying to grab a little bit of damage. Does get that speed boost here from that. Oh. Nautilus getting knocked back. No one still following up. Looks like on the side there are two. Paranoia being used to catch up. Unfortunately, no target being found there. Smolder trying to slow down that TF. Just a hint. Tries to take the cut corner gold cards running out here it looks like the base will be the next target big oh. fight coming out here Gwen coming down to zero HP the wind wall also coming out here from Yasuo trying to get out exhaust being used does use the ultimate stand <laughs> united Smolder just grabbing about 5,000 extra HP no no uh no contest here that's so much shield and also you notice at the end the builds from Rex actually made it so it's impossible for Klug to even do damage to them anymore because they had the Anathema's Chains and the Wukern. So, yeah, Klug great. Could, couldn't really do anything at the end of the game, especially when Prisma got super fed and then Velsus got super fed from the early game. And then obviously you have the Smolder. You have a lot of ability just to play off that. But I think there's a lot of hiccups in the early game that kept Miss Cats from actually gaining the lead that they needed to snowball that to a victory yes i agree there are definitely some points where uh some 50 50s and it, just the bot lane the ability for them to consistently get out of these ganks and leave with 100 hp unscathed it definitely helped i did criticize the flannel team it didn't look like in the early game or even like early to mid game they were playing as a team it looked very solo cute esque but once they got to that team fight aspect they played very well as a team yeah just great cohesiveness and that flash chantant out of nowhere that that was yeah, definitely the that was definitely point. what actually just flipped the game and it just just brought it to flannel's victory it was definitely the play of the game Perfect. I think that's all we have for game one here. Uh, we'll be looking forward for game two and seeing picks and bans.
We are back with game two. We had a fiesta and a banger game one as Flannel does take a 1-0 victory um, over Mr. Cat's Gold. Um, but we are now in game two. The heck of is just starting. Kitano, what do you expect to be banned or changed up this game? <laughs> I'm a Spalder. Yep, that's uh, yeah. definitely going to be coming out. I'm going to see if Gwen gets taken off the field here as well. Talia being taken off. Aatrox being taken off. That's a fairly strong top lane. It's it was just a fiesta from start to finish. I feel like, which was great for the action. Yeah, I think so. The Talia did cause a lot of issues because of the fact that you know you're picking Yasuo, you're picking Gwen, and Talia has the ability to you know have a small stun to stop any dashes in their place, kind of negating any major fight, and a lot of ability to disengage, and uh, eventually did a quite a bit of damage so they just don't want to play against that smolder obviously they just didn't like the ticking time bomb of having to play against the smolder yeah uh tf will see if it's banned out i didn't make as much as impact as they would have hoped here uh this past game but maybe they're gonna bring it back towards the bot lane uh karma being banned up as well as rumble and the other side udir following that first round yeah um this guy's gold they have uh, a decision to make of what they want to do. With First pick Yasuo. Pick. <laughs> I don't think they're going to go with the Yasuo this game. No. They had to go with the Maokai, and I assume that might go uh, support. But wait until yeah. it gets completely gutted, and then we won't see it for three seasons. <laughs> I used to main Maokai top lane, and it was a monster and i miss it so much but yeah now really nice on the support i've seen it in the jungle and tf being picked up on the other side we'll see if it's once again that flex pick or if it'll be headed towards the mid as well as senna yeah, senna obviously really good um if they can't pick one champion that keeps stacking i guess you just pick another one <laughs> so many cards you ban one we got another one right up our sleeve unfortunately there's no execute like smolder but the range and damage you get with the amplification definitely one of those ticking time bombs as well we're definitely going to see a much different look for both teams here as uh we do see the varus picked up for physiology so no more yasuo in that bot side um the varus makai actually very strong um has a lot of engage potential has a lot of cc and a lot of damage as well so very lethal bot lane um and then the asel picked up this is looking juicy on that side here. Yeah, that bot lane wombo combo. It doesn't matter how long your range is, if they can really get on you. That Twisted Advance, the Vars, you know, Aurelian Soul, being able to affect those side lanes, really helping out his early roam potential in that. Um, stacking up a little bit of Stardust on the side to really whamming up that ult. So we'll see some stacks on stacks on stacks this game. Yeah, and game as well. There it is. There's another Shen pick. Um, I think they're fine blinding that. I think. Uh, I, I wonder if they're going to ban the, the Gwen here, though. I would imagine so. It's just a, a problem that could happen again. We saw that towards that early mid game where you had to send at least two or three people to kind of, you know, keep that in check. And even then. Uh, you know, Shen was not able to 1v1, but luckily, between the Talia and the Nocturne, they were able to get in there. And there is the Gwen ban, as well as the Nocturne on that side. Both were problem childs for that game at certain points. And we'll see what the final ban is here from Mr. I don't Cat. think the Zin Zhao ban was actually very needed. Um, but uh, they're going to let that go through. And I honestly think that 
might see Miss Cat's gold pick up Lilia in the jungle um, in this game. That would be... A, I love playing her. That sleepy time, if you can get a nice, nice swipe of everyone there, put them to sleep, and watch your team just finish them. Ugh, there's nothing better. Three seconds left on the pick. This should end. Oh, they you called it, but uh, Flan <laughs> decides to take it away. Side so they here. banned it. Okay, so I see what they're trying to do. So they banned it so they could pick it, and they're trying to limit Symphonia Johns, um, their champ pool. So not a lot of champions on their OP.GG, but in terms of jungle, but maybe they could take Diego. Yeah, we'll see how deep their pockets are. You know, you always have that one pocket pick that uh, no one knows that you play, but you know they you definitely want well to pick it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so they pick the trundle, and that trundle is actually it still could be flexed. Um, I wouldn't doubt if uh, they do want to take that like top or something, but I imagine it's gonna go jungle. Yeah, you'd think so. It definitely that tank buster feel which we only see shen on the other side filling that role as of right now but trundle taking towers like there is no tomorrow uh with that buff definitely major thought process supply so that is going to be a trundle top so yeah yeah that I like the all-in that's going to be coming from this side. The Vars, the Maokai, the Vi. You know, Trundle Pillar just catching someone out. A great look. Great team fights here. We'll see what the other side decides to round this off with here. Ultimately, the TF going towards that bot or mid will depend on the pick. Looks like that is going to be a mid TF. We'll see this time if you can make a little bit more impact here. Grab those early ults, find the side lane, grab in there. But a really so I can only imagine he's going to be following up in the next five, ten seconds with, you know, not ten seconds, but the five seconds of his, uh, his follow. Yeah, I think, uh, hmm. So this is going to be interesting, um, because the Lilia pick is going to be interesting. Uh, they're going to be able to basically skirmish around this entire team fight constantly. They're going to have a lot of movement speed and they can't really get pinned down by a lot. It's going to be relying on the Maokai or the Vi Season to assist to try to pin down the Lilia to kill her. Otherwise, she's going to be able to cut around and do a lot of damage. I just imagine her movement speed cranking up to 700 and just looking like Lady McQueen just running around everyone. Becoming a problem. Hopefully it doesn't get there, but uh, for one side at least you'd hope for it not to be there. A couple of global ults as well. The TF, the Shen being picked, the Senna as well. So that is a big three wombo that could be hit. Uh, another thing though is uh, you do have a very easy way to get onto the Senna this game. Um, the, you have the Vi, you have the Varus, the Maokai. Uh, not really the Varus, but the Maokai, the Vi. Um, so the Senna is going to be in some deep trouble. Um, if they get caught out but you do have the sand united once again you do have the recon um once again so you'd have a lot of ways to be saved yeah it we'll see how the early game plays out see if there's anything cheeky going on for the first round if they're just gonna play it nice uh i'm not expecting a level two roam by zen or not by zen but uh by the chundo bundle this time but we'll see what happens i'm kind of interested to see what build path uh the twist fate goes this game All right Velsus uh well last game blur nate played twist fate went kind of like a tankier build um went like rod of ages to rapid fire wait rod of ages to lich to rapid fire it didn't do a lot of damage at all no um but they were they did have a lot of health but it really didn't affect um the game as much as you want a tf should uh you want them to do so i wonder if they're gonna end up going ad this game and play more of a front to back because you're playing against a, a Vi Trundle and you know they're going to target Senna a lot so you're going to be able to do a lot of damage as the ADTF in the mid, side, um, in the mid lane and uh, kind of have two major DPS threats on your team well now you have three because you have Lilia but uh, going to APTF you're just more of a burst uh, champion instead of you know just straight DPS yeah yeah, the TF bring a lot of utility that last game, but 
kind of lacking on that damage side. You know, if you go a little bit more full AP or AD, it could definitely help out the team more. I'm interested to see how that push goes against the Railing Soul, just being able to counter the push and really kind of take it to the other side during that mid game. Um, but yeah, it'll be great brawling team fights again for what we're seeing. Uh, and it looks like they actually opt to go for that tank here. Uh, so they do play both. They play the Rod of Ages, the Ledgebane one. Um, but they also play like ADTF as well. But I think it looks like they prefer the AP build. Um, we'll go on a little bit of a delay here and a break soon and we will be back.
All right, we are back with game two of Flannel Esports Ethereal versus uh, Miscat's Gold. Game one, we saw back and forth, and Flannel ended up taking the victory on the back of a great engage in the top uh, Baron team fight, and then obviously a smolder um, being a late game smolder. But this game, totally different look from both teams, as we have totally new comps. We don't see a Yasuo bottom anymore, and uh, a lot of the champions that we saw last game are banned. What do you expect to happen in this game, Katana? Yeah, just a few few uh, champs making a, a recall here, uh, but I imagine it's going to be just like we did uh, last game here. A couple of early fights, some scrimmages, uh, maybe not as gank heavy. There's no super early game that I'm seeing here uh, that anybody wants. I, I just, I'm interested to see this mid lane, how it goes. I really want to see this TF make a, little, a couple more plays on the side lanes, uh, see the roaming, maybe a, a goon squad bot lane. I just, I'm not sure if the frustration is going to be coming over from the last game because that bot lane, they escaped, I want to say, half a dozen times from either ganks or great engaged from the other side. So it'll be interesting to see if that is a repeat. Yeah, I wonder if uh, the TF pick then is going to go 1-1 one, one or 0-2 oh, in so far. Duh. It looks like we do, we, oh wait, actually Velsa's going for a PTA build, so I think they're actually going to go ADTF this game. Well, we'll see if that makes a little bit more of an impact. I know damage last game, it wasn't crazy off the charts, it wasn't minimum, but uh, gold card coming out, nice stun, cranking it up there. I felt like there was a little bit of an issue though, because they expected to have enough damage with their comp, with the Yasuo bot side, they had the Zin Zhao. Um, and then they have the Gwen, but the problem is the Yasuo really never got going. So now you're depending on the the TF to do a lot of damage, but they couldn't get going as well, and it eventually just all fell apart. Yeah, a little bit more balance on this side here. Uh, coming in, Maokai looking for the twist advance does get Senna out of there. It does have to blow flash for Khan jumping in there trying to save Hoagie getting in. Nice little bit of damage and does burn off some spells. Yep, and that's just the power of uh, having a Malka bot side. Even though both bot laners were level 2, um, just the quick trade at Gage made uh, Mina blow the flash. It's not going to be a flash of so. Top lane here, Shen going in, trading a little bit better. Not against the Gwen this time, but Trundle still able to bounce back and forth here. Um, but those basic attacks are not going to be doing as much damage with nope. shit here. Well, nothing Both too crazy coming junglers out. junglers are actually on... Actually, we have a small um, lead for John against a Lilia, which is kind of interesting. You expect the Lilia to farm extremely quickly, but so far, John is a little bit ahead of them. Yeah, both just kind of mirroring the jungle back and forth here. Scuttles being the next... Next thing here, Shen doing some really nice trades here with Trundle. A little bit better of an early game popping up. Yeah, definitely a lot of damage. Uh, Shen does have quite a bit of early damage with the Q. Um, so getting the best of the trades early on, it's going to be a little bit difficult later on when the Trundle gets a couple of items when the Trundle starts hitting like a truck. Yeah. Some lanes pushing in here, Vi towards that bot side just in case there is a gank here from Milia. Stood around the bush, just waited a little bit, didn't find anyone. We'll see if she starts heading towards that. Scarlet Crab, Milia making an appearance here in mid, just prancing around, saying hey. Yeah, throws the swirl seed into the walls though. <laughs> Can't get a little bit slower to possibly try to get a flash out, but it's just going to run down to the bot scuttle. Um, we do, we might have a, make it a small skirmish right here as it looks like Lilia did get pinged out right there. Yeah, potential early fight there. Uh, Varus and Maokai having a little bit of advantage as they were pushed up to that tower. Shen, nice job being patient there. Nice trades going back and forth. Rex has Trundle. to be careful. I think Rex is going to go down. Oh, having the chomp there does oh. pop the ghost. Burning down a little bit, but Shen does walk away after the ghost being burned and flash as well. Uh, you just gotta be careful. The damage is coming out from the trundle ahead by 11 CS already. So Rex has been prioritizing a little bit of a trading, but Klug is now up in CS. There's a fat wave um, actually gonna crash on tower, so that go uh, the CS lead should uh, shrink just a little bit, if not by the entire thing. 
Yeah, just dissipating just a little bit here. TF looks like first item complete. Boots. Swifties coming out on that side, really wanting to get back in the lane and making those plays. Not too much of a difference here. Bot lane, 5 CS difference. Nothing too crazy across the board just yet. This Lilia growing a little bit more. No items bought. Yep. Small gold lead for Flannel. Um, in the mid lane, I expect... Oh. Yep, and that's where the Swifties comes into play as <laughs> now the TF can't really get pulled into th that E from the Aurelian Soul. Um, Void Grips is getting started by um, John and Plug, so they're going to be able to take this first Void pretty easily. The Dragon has not been started, in fact, uh, the bot lane of Flannel are taking out recalls, so it's the neutral objective is not going to be traded back immediately. Yeah, maybe you just avoid it here for a little while. We'll see when the first dragon does eventually get taken down here. Um, towards that top side, Trundle coming back up there, using his club, whacking his way through the lane a little bit. Yep. Shen taunting in right now. Trundle trying to get outside that safety bubble, trading back. Nice chomp at those minions, doing some work early. You got to be aware of how how uh, much damage a lane of minions can do to you. Yep, and it's a lot of minions stacked up already, and Klug is about half health. Rex, definitely itching for another trade, I think, right here. Um, Swirl Seat is going to land the Klug. Nice Lilia coming in there, trying to get a little bit more damage. Trundle. Yep, spinning in there, and a nice, nice speed buff going on there for the nice gank Shen. Doing well for the taunt, and it looks like bot lane will be the next target here. Maokai coming in there a railing soul kind of hit it off to the side here twist and vance going on the support recon we'll see if they should be able to jump back slowly pinch it in here vi is coming down as well forest not with a lot of health not being able to have six yeah and that fight like top side was actually pretty big because we did see a massive minion cr uh, wave crash so rex is going to be able to back right now and probably get back in the lane without missing another CS, but Klug does have the TM out, so it's going to be able to clear that pretty easily. Yeah. Looks like Scuttle going over. They do find Lilia in the jungle here. Maokai trying to get it. TF ult coming down. Does find the Maokai. Maokai flashing out of their railing soul over the border here. Just hitting 6 for the Vars. Does not use the ult against the Senna. It looks like they will walk away after a little hey drive by what's going on. Yeah, both bot um, ADCs do have cleanse, so that's why we didn't see Physiology throw out the ultimate right there. It's, it would have been immediately cleansed out and uh, could have actually spelled their own doom, but topside takes to see another skirmish. <laughs> just the heavy duty wombo combos from each, and yeah, just the noodle fight. Once again, a little bit of weighted noodle fights going back and forth. Yeah. John is actually on spot side. He's going to be in an actually decent spot to that. Uh, it's going to be seen by a ward in the river. Still going in there, charging up the Vault Breaker. Does get rooted up there. Slams back to the AD carry. Ooh, alt coming down. Does get locked up by the Vars alt as well. Stan United being popped. Cleanse as well to get out of there after everything. A little sapling. Yell surprise. And it looks like Shen doing a nice job of having that awareness. Headed back towards that top side. Losing out a little bit of CS, but does save the teammate. I think uh, the Sand United came a little bit too late. I think uh, the immediately when that cease and desist came out, um, you had the Shen R on top, so you can actually uh, return the fight. But Set Appreciation uh, and uh, Mina actually stepped up immediately and gets punished because they expected John just to leave the bot lane immediately. Yeah, Vi just coming in a little bit. Twist Advance coming down. Ball Breaker being held as long as it can does pay off. Oh, that I'm not Malachi really sure what <laughs> Flannel's bot lane is doing right now. You can't, you can't expect to just keep pushing up against a Maokai when they have a point and click CC, um, especially when you know your Senate doesn't have flash. Yeah, trying to back, Shen find it. There's no mana, unfortunately, for this Trundle. Does have to burn the Ghost. That could have spelled danger there. Yep, but they'll be totally fine. Bot side, definitely going pretty poorly now. Physiology is going to go for that lead dial build so they can have the ghost blade completed it's gonna be a lot uh tougher to actually catch up to them and they'll do a lot of damage with their combo so you yeah. gotta be a little bit worried of that that bot lane gank regank and gank again 
You know, it's like, just get out of my lane and let me farm. So it's nice to see some of these these ganks taking a hold and pressure off there. Lilia trying to find a little bit of a snowball. Hey, here, Maokai also running around. Does catch up that Lilia. Comet comes down. TF being the Bolt Breaker coming out as well. Lilia has to blow Flash. Grabs away slowly. Looks like she might be coming back for round two. <laughs> And we saw this a little bit in game one, where we see a lot more early game roam from the side of Mystic Cats. The, mostly because they probably want the second set of Void Grubs. Um, but the entire bot line side of Flannel decides to roam as well. They're going to be in the middle, but they're going to go ahead and straight back to bot lane. Yeah, a lot of CS looks like two underneath that tower going to be lost. Senna and Rakan headed back. Their dragon's still not a target. And top side once again. Trading back and forth. Trundle a little bit more mana this time. Abilities ready to go. Smacking up oh. that Shen as best he can. Flash being blown. Oh. Set it all coming up, unfortunately. It's just a little... A little too late. Yeah. Set it all trying to just make sure that Rex survived, but... They were pretty much out at that point. The grubs are going to be taken by Missy Cat's gold, so that's going to give them six total. Um, in the mid side, big CS lead for Nate, and Super Hoagie is on the roam again. Belsis will probably go down here as Hoagie has been a menace. Oh, the flash comes out. But yeah, Hoagie has been a menace on this Maokai. I don't think uh, if this goes to game three, that's going to get through, or it's going to get picked. Um, B1. Yeah, he is just causing mayhem everywhere he goes at Twisted Advance. Coming out, oh, just really because it looks like Dragon's gonna be the next target here. Malkai looking as well as Varus. Varus alt is up. Malkai will not. Looks like if Aurelian Soul does decide to join, looks like they are backing. They should be able to just give this Dragon away. Yeah, Let I him mean, have the first one. it's not a big deal. Um, it is a very late first Dragon. It's 12 minutes in. So if you're looking at Soul, you're, you're looking at a very late Soul. So it just becomes a less worthwhile dragon um, the later you take the first one. Yep. Yeah, no harm being done. Trundle here trying to grab that Shen, being pushed up a little bit. just going to 1v1 Rex here, I think. Just go really low, grabbing a little bit of bites out of there. One more hit will do it. A little bit of a Husker do back and forth. Does find out where he's at. Fuck coming in, though. Not wanting to take it. And get Honestly, to... I think John should just take that. You just have more gold that just gets spread out. Um, yes, Luke would have not got the kill, but the value of just having a little bit more gold is, uh, is spread out, especially with the Vi getting a little bit more ahead, able to basically one-shot a Senna, I think it's pretty important. Yeah, that's a little bit of macro play here. It looks like there will be a sleepy dragon coming in. TF running up with that gold, unfortunately not able to. <laughs> Moon does come down and crash. Unfortunately, not able to find the kill. Maokai does exhaust the TF, looking for a little bit more of that Lilia speed burst coming in from that passive. And nothing yeah. will be happening mid. And with how much roaming that Hoagie has been doing, and how much solo time that um, Physiology has been on bot side, he's still up in CS. And uh, of course, he's going to be up in um, XP as well, so... Mina and Set are able to punish the spot side very easily, especially it's a, it's a, even though it's a 2v1. Yeah, nice job by Vars, just being patient, staying in the pocket. Just need to farm, football. nothing too crazy. <laughs> well, I mean, kind of. <laughs> in that aspect, you're the quarterback, you don't want to get caught out, you know, just hide behind your minion line. They're the frontliners, that's what the minions are. They are the front line of this team. The unsung nice. heroes. Level 7 though for Hoagie, so yes, paying the uh, the dividends there of a little bit lesser. But we look on the other side too, Rakan. Level 7. Yeah, I'm looking for something. On, uh, on Senna, about 37. While well, we see the Stardust on literally Nate is 120 right now. Ready to crash down that comment on someone. You know, Ryan's been making a lot more stacking champions over the last <laughs> few years. And here comes the fight. Oh. Malkai trying to push away the Rakan. Looks like that ult will find. There is no more cleanse being burnt out from Senna trying to get out there. Vi not able to find a target. Trundle being the next one here to possibly go down. Lilia. Oh, with the minion oh, block. <laughs> just 
that little bit of hesitation, unfortunately. A lot of movement speed, but that tower doing lots of damage early. Yeah, I think Prisma got minion blocks, so they couldn't just keep running through. Um, and that will save Clue. It's bad. With the ghost popped, but a lot of damage you could see from the Lilia. Um, the tower will go down as well. Uh, actually, never mind. Oh, Nate is here. Brilliant. Soul just pressure. trying to clear out that wave. Good pressure. Exerting his will and force on the side lanes there. Uh, mid lane, nothing really happened there, so a free, free roam by him. And that wave clear that he has with his kit is ridiculous. So, this is the interesting part, right? So, we see Vels' TF build. And they're opting to go with the first item, uh, uh, Triforce. I feel like the value of Shiv in this game um, first item is actually quite a bit because you're gonna be able to wave clear very easily and then use your alt a little bit easier. But yeah, with this build, you're not gonna be able to clear the wave as fast. And you can see right now, like they were able to just get the wave pushed in um, this entire time as Nate went to protect top side and then Harold was also taken. Yep, one minute for Dragon here too. We'll see if any vision gets set up for that and if the teams want to contest right away as it comes out. Trundle now going towards that bot side. Uh, Senna having a little bit of free reigns over there with the CS. Four grouped towards the mid. Yeah. John is currently level 9. We haven't really seen a lot of action from these junglers. Um, but uh, Prisma has been doing a, a lot more uh, proactive plays than John. But the problem is is that the laning of uh, Miss Cats, especially with the roaming Maokai, is paying so much dividends. And none of the repairs can be popped mid, and this tower is probably going to go down. Yeah, just having that pressure towards the mid lane lets you roam towards that dragon's eye. Looks like a little bit of a trap set up here by Maokai. Oh, look at that. Looking towards the pot side, Ball Breaker going all the way to the back, knocking. That's Senna up as best as they can. Senna all coming down, grabbing a little bit of shields for everyone. Bogey going down for the first on that Maokai. Sleepy time, happy for that. Railing Soul, a little bit of pushback. TF ult, gonna grab that vision. Lilia going in and out, unfortunately. Trundle also falling down. Lilia just running amok in this back line. <laughs> oh, you yeah, hate to see it, but the movement speed and no lockdown just allows her to roam free. Yeah, this is kind of what I touched based on in the uh, Pig and Ban is this Lilia wasn't able to get locked down and they just kind of ran amok. And they picked up a lot of kills from themselves and they're actually very, very strong. They try to get the pick onto uh, Mina in the river, but just a quick flash and uh, just the proactive or the entire team collapsing on Flannel um, was able to make this a very one side of the fair. Yeah, buys after that are going to be huge towards that red side. And now with the Infernal Drag coming up too, how much more damage is going to be kicked out by this team? Uh, don't tell Rex to buy some boots. <laughs> I don't think Rex does uh, notice that they don't have boots yet. He, he's, he thinks he's playing Cassiopeia. He's cosplaying. Just <laughs> let the man cook. <laughs> Because, <laughs> oh, they, they just refunded an item, right? And I thought they were like, oh, wait, I should get boots. No, they bought the longsword, so. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs boots when you have a longsword? The best uh, offense is a good defense. <laughs> oh, Lilia just. Oh, yep. Going in and out with that Q, doing massive amounts of damage. Leandri's getting popped and just oh. crushing down Trundle a little bit here. Still not just, done with the man. Down. Lily's just going to win this pretty easily. Oh. Yeah. You can I try to I, or, I thought Prisma was going to actually just stick on the Trundle right there, but I guess not. This tower will probably go down. This clip does have to back, though. Yeah, Lilia just going to be causing a muck, and I love to see the mobility out of her just cause that havoc. Snowball here coming mid. Does find one. Varus, good job of poking there, trying to clear out a little bit more vision. Uh, Mina has 53 stacks right now, so they're working their way towards it. Of course, you're not going to get like the heavy stack Senna as you see uh, as a fasting Senna build, but definitely working on. Looks like they're going to go for the opportunity next on the build path, and I wouldn't be surprised if their third item is going to be Edge of Night. Yeah, just a great third item right there to round that off and 
eventually. It's not the if, it's the when she gets online here. And so far, with those last, with the last team fight around the dragon, that's a nice spike. Yep. But obviously, you have a lot of threats on this uh, flannel team now. Um, Zenith is probably not your first priority anymore. It's definitely going to be Prisma. The Lilia is extremely strong, and also Velsus is getting pretty strong as well. Yeah. Yeah, if you can burst her down, just having those nice items that give you a little bit of health dead. and the AP. Oh, wait. <laughs> Stan United coming in, Moon crashing down, unfortunately not able to finish. Shen grabbing the taunt, trying to get in there, and he turns trying to grab the Blast Plant, unfortunately not able to. And that was a great Stan United there by Shen. Great play. Yep, Stan United, and also I'm pretty sure the uh, Dawning Shadow didn't actually hit, but... Good, uh, good attempt to save their teammate, and this bot lane tier, two, uh, tier 1 will go down, but in the top side, we see Klug actually pushing down, getting close to this tier 2, and but Prisma is here to protect it. Yeah, just a little bit of how you doing there. Varus really close to Senna, grabbing some really good poke. Does have to burn the cleanse there as alt came down. Really low. 80 carry there on the other side, Twisted Advance oh. coming through here surely <laughs> can bring me up top here Lilia running that muck now towards that trundle keeping yeah, him on the outside <laughs> there's no pillar to be had here even if you do it's <laughs> it's not gonna matter here a great tier two push with two low yeah. and you got two but top as well what the how much time you're using there you do lose your tier two mid tower for just a kill on the top side so Overall, a better play for Miss Cat's Gold. Um, they do have to all take a reset because of how low they are. But still, the gold lead is only 1k. Their dragon is going to be coming up in one minute. And they kind of want to make sure that Flannel does not take this because that will just put them on Soul Point. And not only that, Soul Point is the Infernal Dragon. Yeah, still, like you said, 1k difference. Anyone's game can definitely make plays out of nowhere. But... Yeah, if you give up the third dragon here, you force the next one to have to be that do or die team fight. And with that infernal Drake, I mean, no more smolder, but close to an elderly, and then you'll have it there. Yep. Uh, it's topside. Luke is not having a good time. This is uh, <laughs> totally different from the first game. Is uh, a lot of tension is being. Um, given to the top side of the map, make sure Clue can't just go wild in the trundle, and it's working. Um, Prisma is now 4-0-2. They have two items completed. They have the Riftmaker and the Leandri, so they have a ton of damage. Yeah, a little bit of exchange here coming up. The trundle bite just really hitting hard. <laughs> Eventually, after you get that shield out of the way, Shen, uh, unfortunately, is going to be taking the brunt of it. That club might be a little too... Uh, too big. Vi getting stunned up there. A couple of shots coming out from Virus as well. Vault Breaker getting charged up. Not going to be finding a target here. Senna getting ulted on the backside here. Everyone's looking. Fortunately not able to find. They do find TF. Still Senna running around in the back there. Lilia still venturing out here. Threatening yeah, to be the problem. Top Does have that right ward. Top side, yeah. Just getting taken in here. That's going to be a turn hit, but they don't see what's going on here. Backside to fall, double kill for the bars. Looking for the third, does get caught up there, but Trundle just whacking away, and that's gonna be some super minions coming out on blue. Yeah, that fight actually became super spread out for Flannel, and you saw Set appreciated her share. Uh, Set and then Prisma not actually be in the area when Mina and Belsis got caught out, so that fight became wild, and his physiology was able to get the shutdown onto Prisma and another kill on top of that. So you're looking at a very strong Varus. You see the top side of the map. The 1v1 does go over to Klug and the dragon going over to um, Miscat as well. So that dragon stacking has stopped. A lot of gold going in the hands of the carries of Miscat's gold. And now we're seeing a 3k gold lead off of that one very, very bad fight from Flannel. Yeah, once the Southern Shen go down, there's got to be a Telltale there going, Hey guys, we just need to back off here. Give up the Dragon. That's their first. We don't need to force it. But unfortunately, a lot of bad exchanges there happening. Yeah. And now they're going to be uh, forced to clear this wave top. So you know the Shen can't be on this top side anymore because they're not going to be able to actually deal with these super minions. So the Shen most likely has to go bot side, but that's also where Klug is going to go. And that means Klug is going to be able to try to take this bot lane 
tier one, tier two, and maybe the inhibitor as well. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. It's the trundle just becoming so much of a problem. <laughs> just, I mean, Shen, yes, you could block so many auto attacks, but it's not going to last for the duration I mean, of the fight. I go back to uh, the issue of uh, Rex does not have boots yet. <laughs> do you think he's going to notice here by the end? Probably. Or do you think the entire time it's going to be, ah, oh, who needs boots? They're just going to give up this Baron for that play, though. Um, so. You can say yes, you got the Shen. Oh. TP right. and Ald coming in here. Baron getting it's zoned out here. Lil at four here. Might be a smite fight going on. Set it over the top, trying no to. Fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, not anymore. Because <laughs> yeah. okay, uh, trying to get out of there. Yeah, because of how far Prisma was, because they tried to make the play on the bot side, that just is the green light. Since yeah. you see the jungler in the bot side, it's a green light just to go for the Baron. Um, yes, you have both your Shen and TF TPing in, but your Lily is the one that you really need in that fight because of how much damage they do. Baron getting sent over here. We'll see how how they push here. Trundle having that TP. The ghost just popping up here as well. A nice 4-1 opportunity. I'd say send them on opposite lanes, really pressure in those Nexus Towers even. It looks like Trundle's going to be going bottom, grabbing that tier 2 and the Nexus and Hib. Everyone else just pushing the mid. Yeah, and especially because you already have an inhibitor down, taking these other inhibitors is just going to be extremely easy. Um, you have the ability of just using the Maokai ultimate to zone off everyone from this inhibitor tower, and you just go take the tower and then you just take the inhibitor after. So you don't really need to use the Maokai to uh, engage right here. You just you want to kind of push everyone out. Yeah. I'd like to see a little bit more vision coming out on blue side here towards that jungle, just to give Trend a little bit more pressure heads up of, you know, what's coming in his way so they can have that nice little back and forth dance. Great damage coming in by that far as both Lilia, unfortunately. Might have to back and give a little bit of pressure. Senna looks like they're tag teaming in and out there. Senna now stepping up. Shen taking the brunt of it. No boots, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think it actually was a problem. I think they got ran down topside because they didn't have boots. Uh, yes. <laughs> <I wonder>. Trundle, <laughs> Trundle took full advantage of it. Yeah. But this tower is taking so much damage from this cannon minion. And on the bot side, we see uh, Clue actually just pushing by themselves. A fight does break out, but... Yeah, we're kind of yeah, going it's in. just going to be a one-sided affair. I think this cat's just going to wipe the floor. Yep, TF in and the moon coming down, yeah. smashing into everyone. Trundle making his way over. Nice pillar to slow everyone down. Shen trying to run, but you don't run far without boots. Lilia trying to make up for the movement speed. Zooming in and out, but fortunately just not enough damage. Three yeah, for and that's going to be the game right there as you know these tyrants are just going to melt pretty quickly. Prisma is going to try their best, but it looks like they're just going to get blown up. Actually, Ooh. they take one with them. Um, Not still. bad finding three with that sleep time, but unfortunately, too little too late, and that will be the game. Yeah, and it actually just snowballed from that very messy fight um, in the mid lane uh, where you didn't have your Cotton, you didn't have your Lilia, and your two big carries got cut out while your top side of the map um, gets 1v1, enabling Trundle just to go in and just, just try to push into the inhibitor and take the inhibitor themselves. Yeah. Alright. Take a look at the damage charts here. Ooh, Vi. <laughs> yeah, not but... 6,000. A lot of utility coming out, great team fights, but yeah, just not making as much waves as you'd hope. Yeah. You can see how much damage like the team of uh, Flannel was doing, but in the overall aspect is that they just took one bad fight and it just all melted from there. Whenever they took it, take a fight they had to have Lilia in the area if they didn't that means they just uh, lose it and then giving up the Baron because you're trying to catch up the trundle you can't sacrifice your Lilia um, to go to bot side because that just gives a green light you get a kill in the trundle but you lose a Baron so was it really worth it no and also no boots I think that's the biggest problem of this entire 
entire game to do cry boots. The funny thing is, sometimes, you know, he's like, oh, you can't just, you know, attribute a uh, game loss because of boots. But we did see th that fight, or in top side, where if he had boots, you might be able to survive, you might be able to protect the inhibitor. Um, yeah. But I don't think that takes away from the fact that that mid fight went so poorly that uh, that the game might have just swung into Miskat's favor anyway. Yeah, def definitely a giant swing in their favor. But we will go ahead and take it to a break as we get ready for game three. Chemically brought down on its knees every breath that I breathe Clench fists and gritting teeth Tonight the energy flowing in me Is waiting for relief Thunder beneath my feet I slide you on my name Until the dawn Welcome back. Uh, quick bands coming out here. Shen, Smolder, Vi, and the Maokai. That Maokai being just that early game nuisance. And we also have Smolder, that game one, just stacking up quick here. Caitlyn also coming out. Not seeing her. Karma 
no early poke going on mid or support 1-1 one, one series it's been a nail biter there's always been that mid game tip that we've seen games one and two we'll see if that continues here for game three first picks coming out here we'll see if they continue to kind of leave the bot lane towards the end or if they're going to be picking towards those at the later waiting for that timer first pick i'm hoping to see something crazy we'll see like a cast and a collie some strange mid lux coming out love to see a couple of bindings and that laser demacia laser coming in as well we'll see what cats respond with here lux can be flexed here towards that mid or support role but you kind of feel like you have to get ahead early on here otherwise your damage just does not feel the best towards the later portion Senna being re-picked again here was picked game two making a recall here We'll see if they go for another lanky bot lane as well that Rakan I was surprised that was not banned out as twice it's just saved so many times and had so many nice plays here global alts Udir mustering his way through is being picked up here uh, we'll see if the TF does get picked up as well it's a lot of a lot of globals here being picked for by both teams in game one and two a little bit of a, a little bit of a relaxation here at least for the first couple of picks far as making a comeback as well it was a good job for the engage tools on that alt as well as that poke that was coming out earlier we saw that tower defense you know just a couple of cues will definitely chunk you out to where you're getting yourself a little nervous talia also making a reappearance as well and we'll see what they have to answer back with and then the ban phase mid getting foretold as well as that bot lane lux now going towards bot with that virus lots of lockup lots of range great poke coming out of there oh dear just trying to be a menace with those changes now and we'll see if he's able to power farm the jungle and really become that havoc and more stacks on stacks coming in from Mr. Cat's Vigor now with that free range stacking Q and passive with that Senna. This is the time bomb that you don't want to go off when it's on your side. Ban phase now coming through. A couple of jungle picks for one, and looks like top side here might be a couple of more target bans here. We'll see if the Gwen does end up going through or if they will end up banning it as it was a menace here in game one Nocturne. Also, banned out here as well as it was in game two. We'll see what Flannel has to answer back with that. Taking their time, really thinking it over here. Gwen getting banned out. And Lilia from that other side being hovered right now. Just the mobility on that champion with not a lot of lockdown. They really kind of paid the price for it. That past game here, unfortunately, didn't quite pay dividends at the very end, but still ran a little bit of a muck. Trundle being banned as well towards that top side. No chomp and biting and tower taking here coming up. We'll see if they find a couple more uh, stacking champs as well here for, for Mystic Cats. Last second here, I'll see what they pick. Nautilus, great CC coming out from this side. You got the Vigor Cage, the Nautilus Alt, Senna being able to find someone. So great, great times of engage over there. Looks like just the top lane. They are leaving to choose for that final pick. Shen being banned out on the side. No Trundle, it'll be interesting. Hopefully we'll see some new champions here. Aatrox still left up, was banned in the second game. We'll see if they do end up picking that flannel here picking out the poppy interesting choice here it can be flexed top or can be put in the jungle we've seen both both played here 
just a little bit of a new sense of her as well. There's no zaps or dashes on the other side, but that hammer can really make a play, sending out, you know, two or three people to the sideline, making it a nice uneven fight. Flannel with their final pick here being the rumble. That big giant rumbald coming down on top side. They have to be wary about that on the fight of Mystic Cats. A nice rumbald will either divide your team or everyone will be stepping over it trying to get to that team fight. Uh, see what they have to respond here back with. And we'll see where the pressure ends up being here. I'm just I'm worried about the Lux falling behind on that support. But if you can get some really nice, good poke early, really make that laning phase for Senna and then Nautilus uh, you know giving him held towards the bot side and Malphite being picked up here on that final piece for that top lane against that rumble so a big giant wombo combo we're seeing, they're going to be deleting one person between that Malphite ult, the Vigor ult Senna on top of that so it'll be interesting to see uh see this team comp out here lots of late game pressure coming out from mystics and flannel really trying to get that early pressure here with that bot lane we'll see if poppy decides to go down there and really try to exuberate that pressure down there kind of leave rumble towards towards the top side with that malphite i can't imagine malphite's gonna have a great lane against the rumble um unless he goes full ap and we'll see if he's trying to one shot someone himself here Teams will be getting in here to the Rift final game one and one. Just a couple of team fights here towards that mid game, really dictating the pace and really just swinging the games in here for them. First game, it was that Shen alt, or not the alt, the taunt, picking up three, I think maybe even four people there. Smolder kind of raining down at that full stack and really just cleaned, wiped the team, grabbed the Baron and started pushing. Towards the other side, then we had Shen, unfortunately, getting picked up by the Trundle. Trundle snacking and packing him down all the way to that tower inhibitor and that team fight for the dragon that probably wasn't needed to be fought against there, uh, giving up that first dragon. But also that tower inhib kind of slowly cracked him and allowed that gold swing to happen. We'll take it here to an intermission, and we will be back with the third and final game. Give me some of that good stuff! Watch <gasps> up! Boom!
All right, we are back with our third and final game of this tonight's series between Flannel Esports and Miss Cat's Gold. I am your color caster, the bully. With me is Kitano. We are getting ready for a great game to end the series as game one and two. Pretty back and forth both games, but, you know, 
in the end, both teams take one of them. Yeah, just that one mid-game swing that swung it, you know, for both of their respective teams. We had a great Shen play, and then Trendle making that solo individual, killing the Shen, and then the team fight at the Dragon coming out. So I'm expecting same thing here. We'll see something around that 20, you know, 25 minute mark to really tip the scales. Yep, in this game we do not see the Shen picked as uh, Rex decides to go with the Poppy into Klug's mouth fight. So definitely a different look from Klug as well, because in the game 1 and 2, they opted for some heavy damage split pushing type um, champions. This game, more of the team fight. Uh, definitely going to be looking for that stuff, of course, in mid to or even like early to mid to late games in these ma uh, massive neutral objective fights. Um, can definitely turn the tables on any kind of fight. Yeah, Shen getting bent out. They said we had enough. He's made too many plays. Let's just sideline him for this one here. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be pretty much a wet noodle fight at top side, uh, <laughs> I think. But this game, we do see John getting the Udyr. Last game, they weren't able to get a lot of the champions that they regularly play. But this game, Udyr, I know that he plays that quite a bit. So it's going to be a lot more comfortable. You won't see the 5k damage by in this game. So Yeah, unfortunately, out. getting banned out too. They did let the Udyr go through, and that was picked up very early. Uh, Ghost running on that. We'll see how many people he... Uh, Runs down to the ground here. Nautilus just stepping up, looking a little aggressive in case the level 2 hits and looking for that early one. Here is that level 2 early. Looking for that dredge line. Does find the virus getting poked out by Senna. Great damage coming out. Oof. Yeah, in this game you do see Physiology going for the Nautilus. They're doing the fasting Senna on the bot side. They're stacking the bot side. They're stacking mid side. and Looks like in this game... Flannel actually doesn't have any champions that actually stacks. Yeah, I feel like the name of the game here this time has just been stacks on stacks on stacks. <laughs> but Flannel does have a sh crap ton of damage on their team as they pick the Rumble Jungle. Um, they actually opted to go with the first strike in the Rumble Jungle. And I don't know how much I like that because you really don't get a lot of value out of that in the jungle. Correct, yeah, unless you're ganking pretty heavily and finding those side yeah. lanes, you know, but I just, I don't see it, that it happened here early enough, and I think there is some better summer, or some better uh, abilities to be, to be Yeah, chosen. I mean, when, when uh, Rumble Jungle was actually a pretty big thing, it was usually the Dark Harvest you take, because you could pretty much get a stack every gank you go, um, you make, so this game... First strike, I want to see them being pretty aggressive if they want to get any stacks. Even if they just want to walk in the lane, get a quick trade. Honestly, we'll get them 20 to 40 golds and eventually a lot more. Yeah, Rumble just trying to chase through here. Oh. Does end up getting well, the camp here. here. Ooh, John's gonna dear, be unfortunately. Here. Being on the receiving end of that punishment for the jungle Rumble here. Um, alt, or not the alt, the cage coming down. Looks like bot lane Varus. Getting hit up a little bit more here. Fortunately, not able to find anyone on that queue. Top side as well, Malphite. Not a lot of mana being sung. There is a lot of low health bars. Yeah, everywhere. So trade. But <laughs> uh, Rumble actually got 32 gold out of it. Oh, big binding there from the Lux in the bot side, but really can't do much off of that because of how low Mina is. Ooh, flash coming out here. Rumble looking for the kill. Senna oh no, you can't out. do he that. found underneath tower, just one, one hit from the Nautilus, unfortunately. <laughs> Racks him up there, and a little bit of a greedy play here. The problem is, when you make that kind of play, you're flashing under, you know you're not going to get out. So what's going to either happen is that you get a one-for-one one kill, or you die without getting the kill. And unfortunately for Prisma, died without getting the kill. And Klug is looking for the kill in the top side, Ooh. so solo bolo from Klug um, on the poppy, so... Might not be the trundle, but doesn't matter. Yeah, just TPing back, grabbing a little bit of that pressure, and does find Poppy in a little bit of an awkward situation. Now picking up that Sheen for Poppy, and that will be a nice little damage burst for that here. Mid laners, no alts yet, and we'll take a look at those Veeger stacks as they keep on stacking up here. Level 5 for Poppy here. Malphite still having a little bit of advantage. No mana, unfortunately, to use the alt here. Vigor, high Ooh. skill cap coming down. 
barely knocking Talia down just to that bite size. Now that was the, uh, I think it was the first strike stack that came at the very end to kill or something. <laughs> but it was um, unlucky. <laughs> big fight coming in the bot side and Super Hoagie is taking out a ton of damage, but they're not going to be seeing Mina and Set just get the better of that trade. A big thing to notice though, in the top side, that fight was Klug just trying to get as much damage down onto Rex as possible because he knows he's going to take a reset. And since Rex TP'd back to lane, Klug didn't come back to lane with a full Bammies and Rex is already half health. Oh, a rumble once again punishing that. The cage does come down, does find a little bit of damage, not quite yet because of the low ability, but we do see Udir getting caught out and finally getting punished here from that rumble. Good job by we'll Rumble say, finding him. First one's getting a lot of value out of his first strike with <laughs> <laughs> fighting he's doing. But looks like for in this game, we didn't see this happen in game one or two, but it looks like finally Flannel's gonna opt to go for that void um grubs first and they're gonna finally deny it. In the first two games, Miss Cat's got all twelve. Yeah, it looks like a fight about to break up your mouth. I nicely having that all rumble does not yet. There's a rumble not the rebel, the Malphite all coming down, grabbing oh. two, Cage coming down as well. A oh. three for none. And it oh. kind of became a tunnel vision. Prisma was staying on the grubs while the other two were starting to fight. Just got a collapse happen, and we saw Klug hitting that level six, having the unstoppable force um, before they came back to the lane. And they were able to use that very effectively right there, picking up a kill for themselves. Literally, Nate took a kill for themselves as well. This is becoming a very one-sided affair, which we didn't see in game one or two. Yeah, lots of early aggression here coming out, and it's really paying off here for them. Oh, just, you hate to see that. Rumble just not quite six being able to affect the outcome of that like that Malphite does. So Rex is actually opting to go for uh, Iceborne Gauntlet um, against his team. And, I mean, you're looking at a team of Malphite Udyr, uh, Vagar, and then the Senna. So you're not going to have a lot of value of that armor um, in any of these fights because you're looking at mostly magic damage. Yeah, we'll see if it's more just to grab people and kind of keep them within range here. Talia looking for that Vagar. Udyr coming out from the backside here. He is going to get caught out here and will go down. But, oh, Rumble coming down on top of that, looking for maybe a little bit of more damage. Um, one for one in the mid lane, but those stacks going over to, over to Veeger will surely pounce up here towards that mid and late game, and you're going to see that 1,000 AP and that high skill cap all just delete one person as quickly as they uh, found themselves oh, in the fight. Rex is going for this kill and has to flash out. Was barely not able to kill Klug in the top side, so Klug will be able to get out. Flash burned by Rex, but Rex should be able to push this in pretty easily. Maybe get a play for themselves. Malphite losing, just living by 20 HP. Ugh, yeah, close. It's close. <laughs> <laughs> it's very close. But the goal lead, only about 1.8k right now. It's still a pretty significant amount. Nate taking a trade in the mid lane. Um, definitely doing a ton of damage. Yeah. Else has got to be careful. <laughs> Else is laying on fire. <laughs> Yeah, that rumble just in ever presence everywhere. It looks like Nautilus here does have the ultimate, does pop up Lux, does find Varus as well. Varus ult, nice job, just kind of keeping everyone at bay there. Also locking up the back line of that and a unsuccessful gank here. Yeah, I mean, they get two flashes out right there. Um, so not the worst, but I think they could have settled on trying to kill... Um, set appreciator um easier uh but i think they wanted to try to get as many people as possible on that one <laughs> wet noodle fight top once again going back and forth here bot lane still looking to be a little bit of a pressure tp coming out for the nautilus it looks like we'll see if we do get a fight here poppy still trying to get back and forth here with the malphite we head towards the bot lane at that dragon pit and they are trying to find some way to get in. Dragon at 4k HP. There is yet. TP on Klug. No TP on Rex. 
So we there might is have... a rumble trying to get everyone out. Lux all on nice. top of that. Well Brings some nice and low TP being brought up from Malphite. Does have ultimate as well. They do start to run back. Poppy not able to get it. And there is the Malphite ult popping up three. Grabbing that. They are trying to cheat off the back end of this. Poppy yeah. still grabbing some damage on the top side. But they just want to say, hey, we got the dragon. Let's get out. Regroup. Yeah. They lose the t uh, plate top, probably another plate top for that. But that was a great unstoppable force by Klug. Unfortunately, there's no follow up for that uh, as the Dami sh Shadow was actually used to try to save Nate early on. Um, maybe they didn't particularly save him, but uh, without that ability, they probably could have got a kill onto Mina. But unfortunately, it becomes just a dragon for a two plates top, which is pretty even in my opinion, especially again with the late dragon. Correct. First dragon. Yeah, that dragon being taken uh, a little bit earlier than it was the last time. We'll see a couple of later dragons as well. See how big of a priority that remains here. It looks like every time there's an objective, this team likes to gather around and just play with it here. Yeah, and we do see in this game Rex decides to build boots. So that's good. Barely dodging out of that cage. <laughs> but so far, both mid laners are doing a ton of damage. Uh, one thing just to be careful of, of the Vagar, one stun landed is pretty much going to be your entire health bar at this point, with the Ludens complete, and then once they get their second item. Um, but we're going to see more of that later in the game where these team fights where you're going to lead off with a supple force and then you can have the baby cage on top of it just locking everyone down and then having the uh, Donny Shadows on top is just going to create so much damage that if you get trapped into it you're just done for. Yeah 116 for the stacks of Vigor there and just about 250 AP so he's going to be hitting pretty hard here early and at this rate he is going to be a monster come that 20 minute mark. And the gold lead is pretty much, uh, oh, Mels has got to be a little bit careful, or oh. does he, as he actually kills Larry Nate. Nate gets caught in the Talia W, but the seismic shove coming in clutch right there gets that solo kill. We got three and three Talias versus a two and two Vagar now. <laughs> yeah, just gathering a couple more of those stacks for that Archangel Staff, waiting for that to be complete, and that Dark Seal grabbing two stacks on that as well. If you hopefully grab a couple of more kills, really kind of keep scaling with that Viger. Um, really, you know, trading that, those waves here. Nautilus grabbing up as much as he can. Starving Senna here. One O oh, and four. We'll take a look at her as well. She has two, looks like 34 stacks. And looks like a small train of bot side. Hope you actually got caught by that uh, final spark from set. So, pretty, pretty good trade in the bot side, but Mina is gonna get rooted up here. Big bite actually can break out. Yeah, just right outside of tower range. Double flash is being burned <laughs> out. <laughs> High skill cap all from Viger coming in, finding it as well. Um, two for Man, zero what an here. outplay right there. <laughs> That's literally I don't know how he's landing. Flash he's on man, but you know. <laughs> Just the instant lead. Rumble coming down, making that line, that DMZ. Nautilus running away here. Talia grabbing on her surfboard. Unfortunately, the hook not finding anything. We'll see where the targets lie here. Udir. Oh, he going down. Looking to be the next one here. Nautilus going down. Senna going down. And finally, wow, what a play there from those two. That was a great play by Velsus. Um, we saw in game one, they were actually crazy. Oh, we see this all the top side. But in game one, Vels uh, Velsus was actually insane on Talia and bring it back for game three when it really matters. And they are putting on a clinic as that was a great run by them. And also a great play by Prisma being there at the right time, just cleaning up that fight. The gold lead is still slightly in favor of Miss Cat's gold, but not by much. Yeah, you see a great job by Vigor just staying in there. I won't say the pocket because it's not football. Grabbing up that tower and basically deleting half of uh, Lux's life here in the, you know, two two shots. Yeah, that's going to be tower going down um, in the top side. As, uh, after the solo kill from Kluke, that's going to be top side tower down. 
CS is pretty even topside, but 302 Malphite, they're going to be extremely tanky later on in this game. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a oh, it's going to be a problem here in and out dragon coming up here in five seconds ocean dragon for that one a little bit of refresher mana health we'll see if they opt to fight for this one or if they're going to give this one over and let it be a two zero dragon it's like rumble towards the top side no need yeah hobie fight. actually only has 42 stacks on the center right now i feel like that's slightly behind of what averages not really yeah, sure but it just, it just seems pretty low for me. Yeah. A little low, but, you know, you got plenty of time if you can delay a little bit. Luxie trying to harass a little bit here. Maybe a final spark coming in. Unfortunately, oh. a little too late to steal. Vigor actually taking this one here. Finds a Talia in the cage. Barely gets a sun up in the Malphite. Unstoppable Force finding someone. Nautilus going over that side. Finding the Lux oh. as well. Does end up getting deleted. Varus being oh. the next target here, and he is gone. Yeah. Uh, now we see Ooh. Prisma in. Oh, it actually flashes in. They'll probably at least go one for one here. Oh, oh they might no. just die without getting anything. Oh, you hate to see that. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened early on in the game. When you flash in like that, you're either going one for one or you're going one for zero. And again, they went is one it for worth it? zero for one. Sorry. Yeah. Topside, Rex decides to keep pushing. Did have TP in that fight. Decides to not to TP in, uh, which I think was the right decision. I think that fight was just over the minute that Velsus got picked off. Um, so getting a little bit of damage on this tier 2 turret. Also took the tier 1 tower. Yeah, just bringing a little bit of gold back from that tower. And now that one's, um, you know, within ra striking range of a, of a split coming down here. Just opening up the board a little bit more. And the Iceborne Gauntlets, like you said earlier, how effective is that going to be here towards that mid to late game? I mean, you get health, you get like the slow, but like from the Spellblade, uh, you get quite a bit of damage. But the problem is you're playing against champions that will just nuke you because they're all AP. But they're innate, taking a lot of damage here, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, Vigor just eating up the entire Wombo combo, but after that, the cooldowns are still still there and Vigor just catching between that uh the ult that he had and the tower shots. Unfortunately just yeah. a little too much. Now seven, two, and five. Belsis doesn't have the Seraphs complete, so still the Archangel staff, so it doesn't have that lifeline um, passive. Probably would have actually saved their life, but they also took a turret shot in that as well. So on top of that, the turret shot, the primary burst, and then the storm surge, um, taking out the life of Velsis, so a little bit too much burst that they can handle for now. Yeah, Dark Seal stacks as well being being let down here. It looks like they are going to be trying to catch someone out. Udir and Nautilus being the tag team duo here. Rumbald comes down trying to look for that Malphite. Getting chunked down. Nautilus finds a little bit of a drudge line. Senna <laughs> in there to clean up the fight here. See what happens here. Varus trying to poke at that Nautilus. Not having much luck as he is pretty tanky. Taking the Blast Plant over here. And a one for zero. Yeah, I feel like at some point uh, Velsus might have to opt for Banshees, especially because you're going against a Malphite, you're going against uh, um, a Vagar, and you go Banshees, you get Zanyas, you might be able to survive any kind of burst. Um, but as of right now, if they get caught by one single CC ability, I think they just get one shot. Yeah, between the Malphite, the Cage, the you know Nautilus, I think a Banshee's available be worth its weight in gold for sure in this game. CC is king. Um, Dragon is going to be coming up in about a minute 40 seconds. The Malphite will definitely be up by then. Uh, so expect another massive team fight here where I think it does benefit uh, this cat pretty heavily. Yeah, it's at that 20 minute mark. Nautilus finding out that Talia. Malphite Too coming in as well. Right there, though. Trying to find it. Does end up going that oh. nice cage all coming down. Lux unfortunately <laughs> getting deleted as well as the virus rumble close to follow as well. And that is a four for one. Yeah, uh, Nate is just way too strong at this point. <laughs> and they're marching their way up to Baron right now. And they don't have Super Hokey, so this Baron take will be slightly slow. But 
they'll be able to get it pretty easily. Uh, Dragon's gonna come up, which ideally you would expect a Flannel to try to take that away, knowing that the Baron is being started. But it's getting it melted might so be, fast, they're it, gonna be it's there getting for melted, the Dragon. But right now, it doesn't feel like Flannel's even looking to prioritize that bear, um, Dragon control as well. So they're not gonna get anything out of it. They're not gonna be able to get Vision into the Dragon Pit to even look for a play on it. And right now, both lanes, side lanes, are getting pushed into them. So they're uh, they're just SOL at this point. <laughs> yeah, Veeger now a little over 250 stacks and 500 AP. It's only going to get yeah. worse here for them. Uh, that cage really coming in clutch and kind of locking everyone down there. We saw two people yep. get just deleted in the beginning of those fights here. And it looks like a mid push will be the play here as they're going to be forcing that team to either come over or they're going to start towards Dragon. Uh -oh. Does find out Lux on some oh. force. Unfortunately, not seeing anyone, but. The team is able to grab the Lux now looking for that pop. He does send out two people here. See if they want to fight off the back of that rumble coming down. Okay. But uh, they Even will be with the back. Unstoppable Forces whiffing, uh, it didn't matter. No. <laughs> Nate literally just two shot set appreciator. The fight's already over. And right now they're sitting at a, almost a 7k gold lead. And they still have the Baron, so they're going to extend this pretty uh, much further. Yeah, Dragon coming over there, that is the third, and the crucial fourth one will be up next here. Yep. Objectives, and nothing on the board for four minutes, so it's kind of free roam. Find someone out on a cage and uh, have some fun. Ooh, a little bit of a cheeky play here. Veeger getting first. caught out a little bit, but able to walk out. Yeah, and I just want to touch on the builds a little bit. Well, honestly, it doesn't matter what Vagar builds. If it's AP, you're still one-shotting. <laughs> but top side, Klug, even though Malphite scales off of armor and just does more damage to armor, opting to just go for the first item, Hollow Radiance, into the Kinetic Rufern, a lot of magic resist, a lot of health. They become a mega tank at this point. They don't need the damage because they can rely on the rest of the team. Yeah, you're just going in there, you're popping someone up, and you're letting your team take the fight here. Ooh. Senna... Good alt coming across the board here, grabbing that shutdown on the Nautilus. Great team fight here. A uh, little bit of a door opening for them here, catching out that Nautilus. Yeah, I would say the team fight. I think that was just a little uh, aggressive folk there. Why? Leading God, into that man. team fight. <laughs> <laughs> Answering back here with a double kill. Malphite yeah. finding someone out. Rumble not able to find anyone yeah. with an alt here. Is that still on cooldown? Yeah, they used the equalizer uh, in the fight before to try to just uh, make sure they got the kill, but ooh, Rex pushes <laughs> Kluke back, and Rex might be in some deep trouble as they're just burning down. It doesn't look like John has Leandri's, so we'll burn down to their death. Yeah, Poppy just uh, hanging on by a, a deer thread there. And now it's just a matter of time. I think they're going to keep up that pressure. I mean, how how well can they defend in their base right now? How do you see this playing well, out for them? We're looking at a 9k gold lead, and you're looking at an extremely fed Vagar. The only way you could win any team fight is if Vagar d dies immediately. Because if Nate's able to get one ability off, that still can chunk the entire team for like half their health. And then obviously, you're going to be scared against the uh, Malphite. You really don't have any protection against a Malphite. You have pretty five pretty squishy targets. I'm going to count Rex as well as they don't have that much MR. Um, so everyone is going to be an easy target. You saw the fight for the dragon is that it didn't matter who they try to pick off. They just wanted to pick off somebody because they know they could just clean house afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, no, no Banshee's Veils coming out yet or on that side, which is going to be the big problem. We see uh, the cage engage, we see the Nautilus, we see the Malphite. There's just so many ways, you know, it's dumb ways to dive. <laughs> so many ways. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons they might not be opting to go for it, but still, uh, it does bring, even the component of the Banshee'sville does give you this, uh, the spell shield, so it might definitely be worth the investment if you're trying to survive in these team fights. Otherwise, like I said, you get caught by a Malphite on top of Force, you get caught by any kind of CC, you're just dead. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping to see a death cap off of Eager and just hopefully trying to scale to the... <laughs> 1500 mark here but we'll see he's in the bush here just hoping that talia steps up unfortunately not 
he is at 690 here for total yeah. AP 300 stack. Ugh. And Baron coming up here a little over a minute. Pretty smart by Velsus to not just try to uh, keep pushing there. Obviously, a lot of people make that mistake, gets killed, and then they end up losing a lot of the map for it. Um, Baron is coming up in a minute. Dragon, Soul Point, coming up in a minute 10. Uh, all three dragons have been go going up for the Miss Cats in this early game. And, uh, you know, Miss Cats definitely looking for that last one. It is actually going to be an, uh, a Mount Soul. So, pretty solid for the overall team, just to make sure they just don't get burst down. I see what you did there. Far as maybe looking at the uh, uh, next target. <laughs> Still great. Unintentional, still great. Malphite getting a little bit of a 2v1 punishment nah, here. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's rock solid, as some would say. Um, trying to take back a little bit. Looks like he's getting burnt down quite a bit by the Rumble. Poppy using the ult, really investing in here. Rumble ult also going down. Poppy still trying to chase on that Malphite. There is no turret to save him, but TP does come out for Nautilus just to deter them away here. So equalizer going down. Now that's not going to be available for this dragon. That's not going to be able uh, available for this Baron if they choose to do so as well. The flash was burned by Klug. A lot of times you'll see them use those top of fours because the flash and the big cooldown. But Klug knows that this is going to be a soul point. So they want that ultimate up. So they opted to use the flash instead. They're TPing to this dragon, and now they're going to look for the soul point with that yeah. ultimate still up. Rumble out just still. Still down here for about the next 30 seconds. Dragon gonna get just cleave down. Malphite on that opposite side, really kind of playing defense with that Nautilus. If they do find anyone, the team can just hop over and have fun here. Poppy just regarding everything, going towards that top side, hopefully trying to take the tower and that dragon, ugh, the fourth, and will be devastated. Yep. Top side. Oh, it looks like. It ultimate used by Klug, but Flash used by Mina to keep them safe. Klug will not have that ultimate for another 90 seconds. Top side, Rex decides to take the tier 2 out of turret, taking 800 gold to the bank. That's a lot of bounty, actually. Yeah. 480 <laughs> split. Eh, split is whatever, but Baron speed started now, too. Still quite a bit there. Baron being the point of attack. We'll see if there is any response here. Looks like Baron's on the bot side of the map, though. Yeah, it's just kind of kind of scooting their way up. They know they're doing it, but yeah. there's no way that they can actually stop them. Yep. So Baron going down, Soul and Hand. I'm pretty sure that this game is minutes from being over as uh, one big team fight, especially what kind of comp you have. You could just annihilate the entire Flannel Esports team and just march down mid end the game. Yeah, this is definitely uh, a, a RAM where you just send it mid and... uh. Hope and pray that nothing happens here. A random cart that's all from another game doesn't get glitched in and spike you for 2k. Yeah, Nate. Now sitting with the Zanya, so uh, they're going to be a little bit more safe. They get caught out. <clears throat> going to be able to stall for a little bit more time. Bot side, you still have uh, the Senna stack. And Hokey is at uh, 80 stacks right now, which is not a lot, I'll be honest. <laughs> so. Yeah, I've seen bigger numbers, but still, he's doing really good for the team, keeping safe, you know, grabbing a couple of kills here and there. Nautilus trying to find someone here. Veeger stepping up, trying to grab that cage. Yeah, a lot of times you see where you do the fasting Senate, but then in the middle of the game, uh, you opt to the Senate to start farming, and that's exactly what happened. So early on, they didn't get a lot of stacks, um, so they're not going to get a lot of stacks because they're now starting to farm. But... With how much damage you already have with Nate, um, it's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Nope. OTP on Malphite, but there's no need to here while, uh, ooh, they try to grab the Talia. She does bash everyone in here. Poppy being the next target here. Oh. They're locking them down. Luxalt <laughs> parting the middle, unfortunately. That's even unstoppable force grabbing three of them, setting all on top of that, grabbing another Poppy going down. And this should be all she wrote here. Yeah. It's, that's all it really needs, is you just march out mid, you have a good ultimate by the Malphite, the game is over. Everyone just got melted down, uh, big team fight, and that's exactly what they're going for. And, and this kind of comp is very easy, it's very straightforward to play, and that's how exactly they played it. Yeah, nothing uh, nothing too crazy, just nice and simple. We're going to run at you, run at you hard, and we're going to take someone out. 
Yeah, Miscat's making a statement with that game three, saying, oh, the series might have been close, but we'll show you why we're the better team. Uh, they will move up to 2-0 and in the split, while Flannel, I believe, go down to 0-2. Well, great games being played. It's always that mid-tier fight that we end up seeing that really kind of bends the game one way or the other this time. Those Malphite cages, or the bigger cages, the Malphite alts, and the Nautilus just keep on playing one after another, and it's unfortunately just too much yep and already uh, i'm just gonna go look at standings real quick <laughs> i believe there's already like a big cutoff of teams uh in terms of who's gonna who's be who's like two and oh and oh and two there's not like a lot of one-on-one -on -one teams i think there's one one-on-one -on -one team well two which one yeah. is So BD Corruption and uh, BD Typhoon, no. Oh, Rev Regalia. Rev and uh, BD Typhoon are both one and one. And then there's four teams that are two and zero, and four teams that are zero and two. Oh. Well, should make for interesting games down the line here. Yeah, let's go see this damage charge real quick, actually. <clears throat> 23,000 from the Vagar. It, it's actually not a lot of damage across the board, mostly because there's not a lot of health to take. Malphite doing his fair share, almost 20,000 on the tank. Yeah, I mean, there was just so many wet noodle fights top side, you kind of <laughs> expected that. But great games for both teams. I do expect this uh, season, that it's going to be a pretty long season. It's nine regular season weeks. So even though if you're down 0 and 2, it does not matter. We've had a team before that started the season 0 and 3, and they went and won the entire thing. So, definitely not the end of the world if your season doesn't start off strong. It's how you end it and how you do in playoffs. Plenty of time. But with that, we're going to end the stream. Thank you for everyone for joining us. Kitano, thank you for casting with me today. Of course. And, thank uh, you, everyone. I don't think we actually have another stream to raid because in BOL 1, looks like TTM 1-2-1 against We Love Soulbreak. Thank you. <clears throat> Good night.